There we go. Should try being less careful, Doc. Less careful, Doc. Check out the books. Survey the books now on the shelf. They're all medical textbooks except for a few. Leaf through the legend of Curly's meat. The book tells a story of a legendary treasure, a massive chest full of premium meat secreted in the hidden sense, not in the extruded sense, in the western desert by an old cowhead named Curly Butterfield. The book purports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but flipping through it is so bad you mostly just find lists of reasons that drinking alcohol is bad. So it's actually a work of ludicrous speculative fiction. Ha ha! Alcohol is good! At least there are some useful appendices in the back, and some diagrams of appendices. Gain 3 XP, yeehaw! Skill up, mysticality level 2. <laughs> Leaf through the goblin with tongue. It's a primer. You start flipping through the goblin language book. It's confusing at first, but eventually you get so engrossed. By the time you take a break from reading, several blurfs have passed. But you know that blurf is the goblin word for hour. You've learned to speak goblin. Sort of. I got a perk. Goblin tongue. <coughs> uh, wow. Shouldn't this be further away from the fireplace? Doc Alice continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. Um, is everything alright? It depends on how fast I can get this whiskey into my bloodstream compared to how fast my liver filters it out. And I, can to talk, I can't talk or drink at the same time. So, she glares at you meaningfully. So what's, uh, I mean, what's the matter, Doc? What's the matter? The whole world's gone to hell in a horse cart, and you ask what's the matter? Bandits, cow demons, dead men walking. Why don't you go ahead and pick one? I'll drink to that. Dead men walking? You haven't seen it? Corpses and skeletons staggered around like puppets with half their strings cut, looking to take a bite out of the living. Nope. Well, just count your lucky stars and stay out of the town cemetery then. Hmm. There's a way to unlock her as a uh, companion, but I don't know what it is. All right, let's go to the ore hole mine. Let's look behind the outhouse. I got a shovel. I got meat. I got a mug. The music is also really good. The control mechanism is labeled cargo elevator control. A poster on the wall behind reads, Blast and Cap Storage. Plungers, both kinds. Tools. Where do you want to send the cargo elevator? Let's do level one. Dang it, looks like you're going to need a crowbar to pry one of the crates open. Dang it. Well, I got an unrefined meat nugget. Let's go to level two. I got a plunger. Let's go to level three. Fix the lock. I got a crowbar. Go back up to level one. I got a blasting cap. Alrighty. Let's hook that up. And press the plunger. I forgot to hook up the blasting cap. I had the blasting cap. Now press the plunger. There we go. Kaboom! I got meat. Hey there, girl. It's okay. I'm a friend. Winnie. The horse shies away from you. Though in this case, it's more like cripplingly introverted away from you. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Look, I brought some oats for you. They aren't poison or anything. In retrospect, I guess that wasn't a very comforting thing to say. Let's pat her on the nose. As you reach out to pat her on the nose, the horse ducks and steps further back into the shadows. Oh, come on. Nay. Feed her the oats. 
You take a handful of rose out of the bag and hold them out to the horse. Here you go. Yum yum. Snort. She saddles away from you warily and makes a surprisingly good attempt to hide from her own shadow. Hide in her own shadow. Come on, please. Eat the oats myself. Look, they're fine, okay? See? You take a handful from the bag and toss them in your mouth. Ugh. It's like the roughest, blandest breakfast cereal you've ever eaten. Still is better than dry cat food. Don't ask. You smile to show the horse that you're fine and realize that you've unconsciously turned around and walked out the door. Oh, jeez, these are powerful. The horse looks at you warily as you re-enter with a cheerful wave. See? Perfectly fine. Pat her on the nose. The horse hunches her shoulders and seems to shrink as you pat her nose. But she doesn't actually flee, so that's something. There's a good girl. Witty? Feed her the oats. The horse finally seems relaxed enough around you, so you offer her a handful of the oats. Wearily, begrudgingly, she eats them. Then she gestures something behind you. You turn around to look, but don't see anything. When you turn back, she's gone. Well, okay then. It's a crack in the wall. Oh, I need three dynamite for that crack. Alright, let's go to... Born Springs Boneyard. Our founder, Zephaniah Boren, 1806 to 1885. He was actually a really interesting guy. Benjamin Crockett, 1320 to 1364. He showed up way too early. Beauregard Skeleton, Captain, 3rd Cavalry, 1820 to 1866. Let us dig up the grave. Alright, what are we gonna do? Uh Alright, let's uh let's shoot. Oh dang. You hit hard. You hit really hard. How many life do I have left? Oh no, I can only afford one more attack. Uh okay, let's increase my armor. Okay, I can afford one more attack now, oh no. Uh, okay. I lose. I lose! Rip me. Defeat. I wouldn't feel too bad about it. He was a captain after all, and you aren't even a private. Nope, but I'm Major General. I don't get angry. A skeleton? You're not going past without a scuffle. Well... Scuffle it is. Shabang. Bang. Victory. Timothy Cochrane, devoted husband. Elizabeth Cochrane, beloved daughter. Silas Cochrane, a baby. Pulse quickens as you get near the spooky translucent horse, who is literally hovering off the ground. You approach the rare semi-transparent horse cautiously, so as to not startle her, though you quickly come to the realization that this is not a horse that startles easily. Hello there, hi. I'm a friend, okay? I said it's strange how you did that without opening your mouth. You pad the horse's nose, which is very cold. If you were going to ride her, you'd want an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Pat her on the nose again. Yep. Still cold. Still cold. Still cold. I wonder how long I can do this for. Oh, there's. This can go on forever, I guess. Alright, let's feed her the oats. Here you go, girl. Have some oats. You hand out a handful of oats for the horse, but she just sort of stares right through you. Brr. Please don't look at me like that. Snort. Pet her on the nose again. Try the oats again. You hold the oats out again. But the horse continues to ignore them. What's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? Am I not? I'm not sure how to make oats spooky. 
I guess I could put some bone meal on them, but I don't have anything handy to grind up bones with. Grave dirt? Rainy. Is that a yes? Weird. Okay. From grave dirt to the oats. You sprinkle the oats with just a little bit of grave dirt and hand them out again. The horse gazes expressionlessly at them and then eats them. Nay. And with that, she glides away in the direction of town. Bizarre. Alright, let's try this one again. I believe I can beat him now. So let's start with this. Bang. See, I'm, I'm gonna beat him this time. I'm so good at this game. Victory! I got an old cavalry, cavalry saber and a gold tooth. Sweet. Beauregard skeleton. So let's see. Let's equip that. Gold tooth. Uh, let's head back into town. Maybe I can convince Doc Atlas that I'm good at this. And she'll want to be my friend. Oh yeah, there was a skeleton in the cemetery. Oh, it's nice to see some outside confirmation I'm not just losing my goddamn mind. But how is that even possible? It ain't possible. It goes against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients don't get back up. Patients? Oh. Ouch. Doc Alice turns away, grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and again. Never get used to it, but, well, it happens. But what doesn't happen is them coming back after it and looking for revenge. Must be pretty rough. Rough, but I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not just patients. It's neighbors, friends, husbands. Oh, um, um, indeed. She turns away from you and focuses her attention back on the bottle. Hmm. Do you have an idea what's causing the resurrections? Well, I heard a rumor. A rumor? What is it? It's when you get incomplete information from an unverified source. It's one of my favorite things to do, especially in a game. Um, if somebody asks you, wait, what is it? You, you answer very literally. And uh, she did that by explaining what a rumor is. It also is it's 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 stupid. Er uh, anyway, what I heard is that there's a feller out west that's supposedly causing it. A necromancer, they call him. Supposedly he's sending magic out into the world somehow. Magic like the bean slingers use? I've never heard of any bean slinger raising the dead, have you? Her scowl deepens. That'll be one hell of a can of beans. <laughs> What's the deal about all the TNT? So when I feel like I'm about to go, I can blow myself into bits so small there won't be nothing left to come back. Too drastic. Drastic hell! No way am I taking the risk of becoming one of those things. Fair enough, I suppose. About that necromancer. Assuming he exists, what about him? Well, maybe someone ought to try to stop him. Doc Alice gives you a sharp look. You? Because I know you ain't talking about me. Why not you? A gray-haired old woman that knows so, as much about fighting as a squirrel knows surgery? Did you hit your head in a bar stool, kid? You aren't that old. And if I were to pick someone to go up against a necromancer, it would be someone who also knows about death, but in a scientific way. A doctor, right? Doc Alice stares at you and takes a swig from her bottle, saying nothing. <laughs> Sounds to me like you've got plenty of motivation to get the job done. For your friends and... and everyone. She continues to look at you, and you can see the gears turning in her head. Beats doing nothing, anyway. Beats locking yourself in a house full of TNT and drinking yourself to death. You aren't even doing any doctorate anymore. She winces and looks away. Then she shakes her head slowly. Seriously expect me to ride out west by myself chasing a rumor? Doesn't have to be by by yourself. I'm heading west, too. Tag along with me, and maybe we can find the guy and put a stop to him. It's crazy. 
Possible. Possible like raising the dead is impossible? Alice crosses her arms and regards you thoroughly. A spark slowly brightens in her eyes. Alright, kid. What the hell? Let's give it a shot. Cool. Booyah! I made a friend. Alright. Let's go to the Fricker's Gang hideout. Fricker Gang's hideout. Third Fricker. The Fricker Gang's intrepid lookout appears to be taking a little nap. We just shoot him! That doesn't seem very sportsmanlike. Sure you're gonna do that? Yes. Really? You're just gonna gun down a hapless sleeping man in cold blood? Cold is the only blood I have. Shoot him! He's just a kid! Everyone dies. Pull the trigger! Dang, partner. I got a perk. Ruthless! Ha! I got a mug of cactus beer. Silver cufflinks and a recovered mug. Sway. Oh, you know what I need to do with that? Uh, let's head back into town. Sorry, I, I was I, I did some research on how to look how to get hard mode, which is why I want to head back into town so quickly. What do you say, Pete? Who me? Uh, I, I say all kinds of things. For instance, ding ding it, so razzle frazzle, scram scramble, grizzle my frizzle frazzle. Uh huh. Pete takes a swig of the whiskey. Pete squints and points to the unrefined meat ore you're carrying. You ain't seem like someone who got much use for a refined ore, stranger. I'll buy it off of you for, off of you for seventy-three meat. Sell him the ore. Okay, Pete, give him nug the nugget. He chuckles and hands you some meat. But I should do business with you. See you later, Pete. Oh, okay, I can't sell him the cufflinks. Okay, back to the hideout. One of the Fricker Gang boys is dozing in the bathtub. Psst, can you pass him the soap? Mumbles and hands you a bar of soap before sinking deeper into both sleep and the tub. One of the Fricker boys is dozing in the bathtub. Drown him! Push his head under the water and hold him there until he stops struggling. At least he died warm. Cautiously approach the Fricker Gang. They're pretty engrossed in their poker game, so it doesn't actually require that much caution. You hide behind a barrel and eavesdrop on their conversation for a while. The one with the eye patch is, yeah, I am cold. Um, but you know what? Sometimes, sometimes being cold is the worst decision. And that's what this run is about. Making bad decisions. They're pretty engrossed in their poker game, so it doesn't seem, doesn't actually require that much caution. You hide behind a barrel and eavesdrop on their conversation for a while. The one with the eye patch is quiet, but you gather that his name is Snipe. Uh, the squirrely one is his brother, Wimpy. What's your, what's your play here? Well, let's shoot one of them in the back. You draw your pistol to execute with the one with the eye patch. His brother screams, jump behind a barrel, and starts firing at you wildly. This shouldn't take long. Alright. Let's shoot the barrel. Oh my goodness, how big is this barrel? <laughs> okay, fine. Whatever. Let's... Lava Fava. Get it? Because it's a fava bean? Stab him. Stab him again. Victory! Yeehaw! Skill up, Mysticality, level 3. Got a mug. I got 50 meat. And I got a door. Rub a dub dub. Alrighty. Let's head back into town. Sometimes you got a shovel poop. Level three gumption. All right. Howdy, Braid. What's your trading? Take the soap lock. I'm gonna go to the sheriff. 
I see the Fricker gang hasn't put a stop to your breathing. Did you rescue my cell door? You hand the sheriff his door, and he hands it back on its hinges. Nice work, stranger. You sell prison cell just about got just got about four times more secure. Are there any Fricker boys left for me to round up? Nope. They won't be bothering this town anymore. Well now, that's the right load off my mind. Looks like I owe you a reward. You produced a big bag of meat. Got another little task for you if you got the time. Should be a lot simpler than the last one. Well, the Fricker gang's busted... Frickers busted the lock when they took the door. Gonna need a new lock. I just happen to have one. That'll do nicely. The sheriff puts the lock on the cell door, then accidentally drops the key and it clatters into the cell. Hellfire. Don't suppose you know how to pick a lock, stranger. You got a needle handy? I'll see what I can do. Sheriff walks into the cell and picks up the key. He looks around for a place to hide and eventually sticks it under his hat. Thank you kindly, stranger. Born Springer never needs more ever gets more any more criminals, they better watch out. That's a good job you've done. Here, have this as a souvenir for your time in Boring Springs. I got a replica sheriff badge. Alright, I guess I don't have any more to sell you. Um Found these mugs. Alright, let's go to Thousand Snakes Gulch. Oh yeah, I got a shiny rock. Let's fight the snake. Eleven hot damage. Hi, Kelsey. Ha! Huh, so good at this. Oh crap, I pressed the wrong button. Oh well. Yes, they are stick figures. This is animation at its highest. Victory! You made a short work of that long snake. This snake looks really angry. You're gonna need every trick in the book to beat this one. I'm good at tricks. Oh, it's going great. See, look, I'm gonna set this one on fire. Oh no, it poisoned me. Well, it's fine, because I'm going to stab it. And after I stab it, I'm going to shoot it right in the bullet wound. Or stab it, I'm going to shoot it right in the stab wound. Nice work. If the whole cowboy thing doesn't work out, you can always get a job as a snake exterminator. Ah, pointy. The snake is going, this horse is going snake crazy. Maybe he was some other kind of crazy before. Hey there, boy. Hey, fella. I'm a friend, okay? Me? It's all it's cool, all right? Be cool. Don't freak out on me. Ready? Look him in the eyes. Come and look at the horse in the eyes. One of them is fixed in a glassy, thousand-yard stare. And the other is revolving madly in its socket like he's trying to think. Try, thinking of trying to escape in every direction simultaneously. He looks to be calming down a little. Now that it's clear, you aren't actually made of spiders, though. Oh my goodness! It's Twiggy, guys! It's Twiggy as a horse! Pat his nose. You carefully and gently pat the horse's nose. He twitches a bit. Okay, a lot. But seems to recognize that you aren't going to eat his eyes, suck at his soul, or whatever madness is bouncing about in that skull of his. That's a good boy. Urf. Feed him the oats. Are you hungry, boy? I've got a little treat for you. Smurf. You feed the crazy horse some of the Winnie Oats. <laughs> no. Um, no, but you can, ca you can cast Polymorph on Twiggy. You feed the crazy horse some of the homie notes, and it gallops away in a winning, or rather a winnier angle. Winnie Argle. <laughs> you feed the crazy horse some of the homie notes, and it gallops away with a winning. I never said you would do it. Hopefully he's headed home and not into a 12th dimension. Um, hi, I don't actually know what the rule in would be for centaurs. Alrighty, let's head into Boring Springs. Alright, I'm gonna sell you the pebble. That's a mighty fire shiny rock you got there, Shaker! I'll give you a 
I didn't wait for that rock. Sell it to you. Pete is as narrow as, uh... Yeah, um, the question is, would a centaur be considered a humanoid? That's the question. Yeah, exactly. Listen, kid, all that stuff that I've been buying from you, you've been spending time underground, ain't you? Well, you listen to old piece of advice. You stay out of oil if you know it's good for you. Your stuff down to the 40th level ain't worth messing with for a fellow who wants to keep his eyes if you catch my messing. Not sure I do, but thanks. Alrighty. I unlocked the 40th level. Which gives me... Where is it? This is a strange black chest. Open the chest. What's wrong with the Wild West game? A wave of nausea hits you as you slide the heavy lid off of the chest. Inside there is a hat. Oh, because of my voices? Is that why you don't like the... Is that why you're done with the voice? It looks evil, and not in an abstract way. It has eyes, and they look like the eyes of a murderer. And it has teeth, which look like the teeth of an animal who would be a murderer if animals understood the concept of murder. Put... put it on. You have a sense of foreboding. Something tells you this is a bad idea. It's me. I'm telling you this is a bad idea. If you put this hat on, you won't ever be able to take it off. And things will be much harder for you. It will be as though your life is a game, and that game's difficulty level is greatly increased if you catch my meaning. Bring it on. You got an item. The hard hat. You grab the terrible hat and put it on your head. You hear a sigh of pleasure coming from above your forehead as you feel the hat's teeth sink into your skull. This is gonna be great. A voice whispers. Shudder. Alright, I got the hard hat. Alrighty. Now I just need to talk to you. I got the dark horse, so I get 300 horse meat. I gave the pale horse, so I get 300 meat. And uh, the crazy horse, so I get 300 meat. Oh, and then I get 100 meat for saving all of them. Thanks. Afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? Can you sell me a horse? I'm gonna buy the ghost horse! Sure thing, I should warn you though, horses get mighty attached to their riders. Once you buy one, you won't be able to change your mind later. Which one are you interested in? Let's go with the spooky pale one. Good choice. That's a good horse if you like that sort of thing. I'll sell her for a thousand meat. I'll take her. You lose a thousand meat. Give her a name. Guys, what should I name my horse? Horsey McHorseface. Oh no, it won't fit. Horsey McHorse is as far as it'll go. <laughs> All right, Horsey McHorse. Are you sure you want to change your name? Are you sure you want to name your horse Horsey McCor? Yes. Yes, I do. All right, then. Horsey McCor the horse. It's got a nice ring to it. Oh, and I almost forgot. Free with every horse purchase is a complimentary map. I got an item. The Southeast-West map. Alrighty, anything else I need to do around here? Yeah, it does have a gray ring to it. Oh, there's some more poop I can clean up. Any more poop around here? Some loose dirt? Oh, I can dig that up. Got some recovered... Got a recovered mug. The recovered mugs are very important. Gives me more meat. And you know what you can do with a lot of meat? 
you can uh, you can buy stuff. On second thought, hold on, hold on, because I have the other m mug to sell. I found this mug. Whoop. Well, nothing more to do right here. Let's head into town. All right then. Oh, my heart had smiled at this idea. What should I do, guys? Should I take Doc Alice or should I go it alone? Oh man. Um, as much as I'd love to do going alone, taking Doc Alice seems like another bad idea. So let's take Doc Alice. Yeah, of course. You knock on Alice's door and tell her it's time to go. Hit the trail. One well, last thing before you go. Up until this point, I've been automatically spending your experience points for you. I'm going to keep doing it, and I promise to give you a nice, well rounded experience. Shall I keep it up, or would you rather, or you prefer to decide for yourself where your XP gets spent? You can always change this later, uh, change this later in the options menu. Go and keep spending automatically. Seems like the worst choice. I discovered a new map location, the town of Dirtwater, and the Manifest Destiny Railroad Camp. Room for rent. Inquire within. Howdy, Doc. If we are going to look into this necromancer business, I figure we ought to start with the local cemeteries. Makes sense. You know where they are? Yeah, I did some research into this territory cemeteries a while back. Territory cemeteries. Territory cemeteries. To see if there was a pattern. You okay? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, there's one not too far from here. The Dave Yard. What do you think we should do next? Well, if you're looking to get a lay of the land, I'd fit, gather, guess a railroad crew would be able to give you a fairly literal interpretation. Makes sense. Well, let's talk to the bar. Well, howdy there. Always nice to see a new face in town. Welcome to the Jewel Saloon. Hi, thanks. I'm Major. Glad to know you, Major. Folks right here just call me Lloyd. What could I do for you? Nice to meet you, Lloyd. I saw a sign out for an advertising a room. That's right. Finest room in the house, and plenty of room for your partner, too. Are you interested? How much does it cost? Well, that's where you're in luck. The previous tenant was a banker, fella. One second. <coughs> How much does it cost? Well, that's where you're in luck. The previous tenant was a banker, fella. He paid a month in advance, right before getting himself killed by bandits. You seem like a decent sort, so the room's yours if you want it. Gratis. Wow, great. Hey, Lloyd. Need any help with anything? Well, if you're handy with mechanical type stuff, something's gone wrong with our player piano player. I thought the music sounded a little off. Yeah, it's not supposed to sound like that. Well, I'll see what I can do. Thanks, I've poked around there myself, but I lost the key. This is suddenly taking a strange turn. Piano player is not very good at his job. Try to fix him. Oh, I need a needle. Oh well. Let's go to the kitchen. Hey, what are you doing in here? Employees only, bud. Oh, sorry, I was just, you know, looking around. So you're the nosy type, eh? Well, I prefer adventuresome. As it happened, there's something you can do for me. I'm out of salt, Peter. I need to go pick up some... Pick me up some more. Salt, Peter? Isn't that used to make gunpowder? And other things. Look, who's the chef here? Me or you? Okay. Okay. Where can I find it? Your best best in military camp. Because it used to make gunpowder. Shut up. The nearest one is Fort Cowardice. They keep it in little green jars. Chef marks your fort marks the fort on your map. You discover a new location. Fort Cowardice. This is where the chef preps ingredients for cooking. So this is where he parks his bear. Atop this pot belly stove is a pot full of slop. A pot stove top slop pot. Uh, is... Is salt peter a food preservative? I feel like that's... Those both sound like bad ideas. Chef is full of canned and bottled ingredients. The box is a slop helper. 
Hey, how come they're allowed to drink without hats on? You guys are having a spirit discussion about guns. And which of theirs is nicer? Aw, oh, sweet. This is a spittoon. Which is sort of a brass bucket that people spit into instead of spitting on the floor. Because not spitting at all is not an option in the society, I guess. I say this despite knowing that you're pretty intimately familiar with spittoons already, sicko. Inspect it. Look, the jewel salon is pretty nice as saloons go. Actual glass in the windows, more than two kinds of drinks, a poker room instead of a cockfighting pit. But this spittoon is still a spittoon. The rancid tobacco spit inside it isn't fancy rancid tobacco spit. Inspect it. So, here we go again. Alright, fine. You are now hunkered down next to a brass filled bucket, which has probably never been cleaned or emptied because you're near the desert, and the ambient humidity around here is pretty low. Low enough that the spit evaporates nearly as quickly as it accumulates. So that's good, right? No, that's bad. It is only the water part of the spit that evaporates. The brass bucket is half full of the rest of the spit, the toxins and filth that don't evaporate. Several years worth. Distilled and concentrated until its consistency of molasses. People aren't allowed to flick cigarettes butts into the spittoon anymore because they bounce out. Search it. You're about to put your hand into a bucket of something the color and viscosity of maple syrup. Except instead of maple, it's flavored with the inside of the mouths of people who chew cigars instead of smoking them and have never brushed their teeth. Yeah. Well, it feels like putting your hand into a bucket of lukewarm tapioca pudding. Except instead of tapioca, it's basically poison. It smells like someone ran over a skunk, waited a week, and then set it on fire. It feels like your hand is dissolving. Well, I have to keep searching now. You found something. You found a tacky, filth-covered porcelain cow figurine. A useless, disgusting thing that will make a great heirloom for your children, assuming you're still able to have any, and you hate them. I got a filthy porcelain cow! <laughs> Hooray! I see you found the local watering hole. Yeah, that's decent. Let me know if you find a whiskey in hole, though. Heh. <laughs> These guys must have fallen asleep during the brawl. Okay, so I can intel it myself. Nice view. There's a postcard on the table. I got a blank postcard. Well, I gotta deliver that to my brother. Hi, I'm Major General. Any mail for me? Mm, nope. Well... I'd like to send a postcard. Alrighty, let's have it. You write a quick note to Rufus, letting him know what you've been up to and that you're okay. That'll be... Oh, it's one of them prepaid ones. That'll be zero meat then. A big cabinet of locked post office boxes. One of those newfangled telegraph machines. This little girl is selling flowers. Oh, I'd love to buy some. I got some sweet smelling flowers. The clerk clears her throat. Howdy, are you the sheriff here? No, we don't currently have a sheriff. Well, I'll be the sheriff, maybe. Um, do you have law enforcement experience? Uh, not really. Have you been to sheriff school? No. Do you have an existing relationship with Dirtwater's local government? Are you familiar with all of the local ordinances? Do you even live here? Uh, no. Then what, may I ask, in tarnation, makes you think you'd be qualified to be the sheriff? Well, I just assumed. You just assumed that you could mosey into town and become sheriff on your first day. Well, when you put it that way. She snores. Five, five, me for every wide-eyed protagonist-looking kid who wandered in here thinking they're the most important tenderfoot to ever strap on air. I would need this dead-end clerking job. Sorry. It's okay. Like I said, it happens all the time. Well, need any help until you find the new sheriff? 
Well, sure, if you're any good with a uh, gun, there's always somebody in need of justice. Wanda posted her back there, sells her over yonder. She points behind her and off to the right, respectively. It's a wanted poster. Or, a WANTED poster if accuracy is important. It says, WANTED! The house in the desert gang. For mortgage non-payment, squatting, and general public nuisance. Also for murder and two collection agents. Last seen at the house in the desert. 500 meat reward. You wonder if the house is named after them, or if they're named after the house. In any case, at least their location is unambiguous. Want to go after them? Yes. You take note of the location of the house and resolve to bring the house gang to justice. The poster reads, WASTED! The Stripey Hat Gang. A grand theft paint and tasteless hat vandalism. Last seen in the vicinity of Cavern Canyon. A thousand beef reward. Interesting. Dirty rotten paint thieves and low down nose fashion sense hat vandals. Despicable. Wanna go after them? Yes! I unlocked the Cavern Canyon. Okay, so all around there is lots available. Already been through here. Dirty water mercantile, what you got? You don't happen to sell, you do not sell needles. Ooh, advanced bean craft. Let's take that. It's a cookbook. Cookbooks are very important. This is a cookbook. A cookbook! Um, yeah, but you know what? I get gold, I get, I get meat for turning them in. So, really... There's a chapter about cooking bean dishes so small that they have to be served intravenously. It gives blood beans, a skill that lets you regenerate health during combat. It includes a chapter about making human-sized or larger automatons and bind them to your will with kitchen tasks. You give Bean Golem, a combat skill which summons a more powerful golem to fight for you. I could be joining them, but I'm the protagonist. And they're the antagonist, or well, an antagonist. There's a recipe that's been scratched out and replaced with a bunch of paranoid, insane scrawlings. Gives wary. A skill that increases your maximum AP. Well, let's learn blood beans. Measure the art of microscopic bean conjuration and fill your bloodstream with restorative proteins. You got a skill, blood beans. Unfortunately, you get so distracted by newfound vigor, you misplace the book. Oh. Waters for horses only. I'm gonna comb your mane. There you go. Good girl. Alrighty. Nothing more in town for me to do, I suppose. So let's go to. Let's see. Let's go to the desert house. As you're riding towards your destination, a flash of color catches your eye. You power up, park your horse, and stop to investigate the source. It's one of them cacti with a rainbow colored buttons on it. Let's collect them. I got some cactus bits. As you dismount and approach the house where the bandits are holed up, you hear a voice from inside say, What was that? Uh oh. Looks like you're gonna have to be sneaky if you wanna avoid a full on fracas. Sneaky is my middle name. Wait, really? Yes, sneaky is my middle name. Okay, if you say so. Ta dum. Dun 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 dun. the sound of it, you'd say this doghouse contains an angry dog. This doghouse contains an angry dog. Very funny. You're not going to be able to get past it without alerting the gang inside the house. Bring them on. You got the jump on them this time. Oh, dang, these guys are strong. I... I, uh... I'm bad. I'm, I'm gonna lose this fight so quickly. Well, let's stab him. And, uh. Then let's do this. You'll never take us alive, and also we'll never pay for this house! Rip. I got angry. Okay. Is there a way for me to. Let's see.
Alright. So there's no way for me to beat these guys just yet. Let's go to the Dave Yard. A ghostly translucent bandit and a ghostly translucent horse rides up and points his ghostly translucent rifle at you, demanding all your ghostly translucent valuables. I mean, he doesn't actually specify that your valuables should be gold, ghostly and translucent, but it doesn't seem like he would have any use for regular ones. Fight him. Oh, dang. Oh, man, I'm gonna... I'm not doing too well at all today. Fire damage. Get burnt. Well, that's a lot of damage. Hmm. Heal me up. Man, this guy is hitting me hard. Boom! Ah, I did it! Victory! You show that bandit you aren't afraid of any ghostly translucent jerks. Yeehaw! I got Hellbender! Temper with the forces of nature, making you yourself a force of nature. Got a ghostly cowboy hat and a bit of ectoplasm. Good job. I got brown boots. He saw still don't have pants, but I can fix that. Hmm. Let's use that instead of the uh, can of infinite beans. Everything else seems fine. These remains look pretty restless. Let's put them down for good. Feeling hot, hot, hot. Ah, oh, no, he hit me. Okay, let's see if we can speed combat up a bit more. on health? Okay, so he does about 7 damage. Aha! You made the restless remains more useful. Yeehaw! Skill up, glamour up too. And I got a skeleton bone. Here lies Dave C. Went down in the theater. Here lies Dave B, dead with his boots on, but not his pants. The tree has dozens of messages carved into the bang bark, each reading Dave was here. Here lies Dave J, rap a pow pow. Here lies Dave L, died of a heart attack. See you in negative 36 years. 
Put him down for good. Unless she just dumps her bag of medicine stuff on me. It's like, well, now you're healed. Victory! I made the restless remains more useful and got a gold tooth. Hooray! Oh boy, free lunch! I got Vienna blood sausages and a thermos of spiked coffee. No, he hit me with spooky damage. Alright, let's bump my armor up a bit and then stab him again. Haha, oh, I'm so good at this. It's a pile of bones that isn't moving around for a change. I got a skull with not tag on it. The skull has a little paper tag to it, which says Inter Cemetery Loan on one side and some notes on the other. Here lies Dave G. Murdered by a different feller named Dave G. Here lies Dave D. The truth was out there. It killed him. One of those things they have in mausoleums, you know, one of them big marble things with jars full of skeletons. Well, let's leave them be. Some kind of ritual circle ground, drawn on the ground in some red chalk. Some big stone sarcophagus. This is a, po a pile of mostly burned rags that maybe used to be a person. You dig through the rags and find a few things that look like they're worth keeping. Gore splattered scroll, human ashes, and a robe receipt. Examine that. It's time you started gathering clues about the whole perambulating dead situation that's going around going, going on around these parts. You found a notebook and paperclip the receipt to the first page. You got an atom. Necromancer journal. The tag on the skull has a serial number and says it was borrowed from the Submission Catacombs on February 19th, 1886. Jeez, this seems really late. The bag of the tag has the catacombs address on it. You discovered a new map location. Old Mission. Skulls, check them out. You scrape the largest of the giblets off the scroll and read it. It says to take a pile of human ashes, spread them out in the shape of a person inside a red chalk ritual circle. Then sprinkle them with stardust and place a mostly perfect or better glass sphere where the heart would be. Anyway, that's the gist of it. The actual text has a lot more these and thous and such as like that. Plus there's a whole bunch of weird gibberish you're supposed to say out loud while you're doing it. I still need a glass sphere. Alrighty, nothing more to do around here. Let's head up to, uh... Let's head over to Fort Cowardice. Oh, I can't do that. Ah, sweet. I got a mother cactus bear. Like the old saying goes, when life gives you cannons, make cannonade. This must be the math tent. Get it? Because there's a big plus by it. Looted. Based on the papers and anatomical diagrams scattered across the surface, you're guessing this desk belongs to Fort Cowardice's nurse. 
The papers are mostly just boring medical records, dental daguerreotypes, lamentations that antibiotics haven't been discovered yet, that kind of thing. Hey, wait, what's this? This looks like it might be important. I got marching orders. There's just a bunch of disgusting drawings of spliced open bodies. Ew. Yikes, this map. Mishap definitely got somebody fired. I got a dummy culvert and cannonball. The sign has the goblin board for toilet on it. That sign says toilet and goblin, which makes it seem pretty likely the goblins use this tent as a toilet. No way are you going in there. You hear the sound of several goblins snoring inside of this tent. Well, let's go in guns blazing. Hmm. This is going to be a tough fight. Erp, I lose. I've already died. I can feel it. Alrighty, let's shoot you again. Let's cast my spell on you. And then, uh, let's heal you. Ripperino, I'm dead. I'm angry. I'm so angry I got passed out. Alrighty, let's see if I got mail. <coughs> you okay, buddy? I'm pretty sure my leg is broken, so no. What happened? Traffic accident? Okay, this voice is actually starting to really grind on me. So I I'm done using the voice for now. That animation is great, man. No, it just said it broke all of a sudden. I guess I don't get enough vitamins or whatever. Good nutrition can be difficult in this day and age. I'm gonna need some medicine for this. Can you help me? Sure thing. Thank you. There's a mission up north. The nuns that they're running a little, little hospital and sells medical supplies. Can you give me some broken leg pills? Broken leg pills. Is that a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. Don't have any with me. Sorry. Huh. Mill! I got a package from Rufus! Good old Rufus. I got more bean crafting! So, bean golem. Bean wall, a spell that will create a wall of beans that provides cover from ranged attacks. And the use the old bean, a skill that temporarily increases your mysticality during a fight. I think the bean golem is probably my best choice right now. Unfortunately, one of your early experiments gets a little rowdy and eats the book. Bad, bad golem. Alrighty. Now that I got some, uh, hmm. Well, let's head back over to Fort Cowardice. I got some cheap whiskey. There's actually a lot of work that goes into this animation. Like, I've done animation before, and even with stick figures, like, this is hard. Oh, nothing interesting there. Alright, I got military grade whiskey and hardtack. I got a shaker of saltpeter. This was the subject of a little, of a classic comedy bit at The Last Supper. Ha ha ha. Get it? They salted Peter. Alrighty, let's head back into town and give this to the chef. I discovered the Stearns Ranch. Keep going where I'm going. I'll head there after. Oh, you know, I want to go to the Jewel Saloon. There you go. Okay, the next thing I need is a certain kind of hot pepper. It's called a murder pepper. Because it's really spicy? Because it literally has a knife and kills people who ask dumb questions. They go in the area outside of town. You should be able to find one if you just wander around a while. Well, let's wander around a while. Catch a whiff of something that makes your eyes water. 
You trace it to its source, a vividly colored red shape hanging from a scraggly little plant. This must be the southeast western murder pepper that feller at the jewel was talking about. Your finger and thumb immediately start throbbing as you pluck the pepper. You toss it into your rucksack before it can do any more damage. You got the southeast western murder pepper. Found me a murder pepper? Ah, uh, that's a nice big one. That'll last a while. Good going. Okay, so if you're still looking for stuff to do, I need someone to go and check my mail. I ordered a new saute knife, but I haven't had time to go fetch it myself. Here's the key to my post office box. You find P.O. Box 441, the one that belongs to the Chef of the Jewel. You open the box and a torrent of junk mail falls out on, to reveal a knife, just sitting loose in the box. Pick it up. Go back to the chef. Back to the chef! So you got my knife? Yep, here you go. Excellent, this was a lot better than the hammer I was using. Okay. I need one more favor from you, but it's the most important. I used to have this recipe for a very secret jerk sauce, but my friend, my, but my jerk friend David J stole it from me, and then he died and took the secret to his grave. Literally. I mean, he was buried with it. <laughs> Excuse me. You want me to dig up his grave? He's dead. He won't mind. No? Okay. Well, back to the Dave Yard. You encounter an overturned wagon, surrounded by ruined books and a broken pair of spectacles. Oh, thank you. Looks like a family of especially literate homesteaders met their untimely end here. Tragic. You pull over the detritus and manage to find exactly one book that is both undestroyed and remotely interesting to you. I got an advanced bean crafting book. Yay! Alright, so we got Butterbean. A spell that reduces an opponent's muscle, mysticality, and moxie. And use the old bean in bean wall. Um, let's do bean wall. Unfortunately, just as you master the techniques, you drop the book on the other side of one of the walls and lose it. Oh. All right. So where's David J? Dave G. Dave D. Dave L, Dave G, he was looking to the sky to save him, but even the sky can't save a feller from like 40 angry bears. Very valid. Dave J, there we go. You dig up the grave and pry open the coffin. Instead of a corpse, it contains a garbage bag. Strange. You reach into the garbage bag and are unsurprised to find, and are surprised to find that's full of pudding? No, it's not just pudding, it's pudding and motor oil? Who would do this? Finally managed to reach all the way to the bottom of the bag and retrieve a sodden lump from the bottom. You unglob the wand right off, then wash your arm in the nearby ditch. This better be worth it. Alright, I got the secret sauce. You folks okay? We're on our way to Dirtwater, but our wagon just broke, went and broke down on us. That's rough, you're liable to get attacked by bandits out here, or snakes, or coyotes, or ghosts. Or other things that basically live exclusively on stranded travelers. Isn't there something you can do to help us? Well, I guess I can give you a ride to dirt water. Alright, I'll give you a... Wait a minute! You've got two horses hitched to the wagon! Why don't you just ride the horses? What? You know how to ride a horse, don't you? Just ride to dirt water. But these are cart horses. Oh, for the love of... Okay. You help the confused settlers figure out how to sit on the back of a cart horse and lead them back to dirt water on a horse. On a rope. There you go. I got a sloppy chef hat, which I can't use because I have the hard hat. Alright, let's go to Stern's Ranch. Because if I have to listen to that bad soundtrack more I may actually just cry so uh oh I know what this one is oh 
you guys ready for some great bad decisions? Oh, the lockbox is, is, uh, is locked, so I can't do that. I need four moxies to investigate that. The toy box contains a single, single object. A creepy burned porcelain doll. Let's talk. No, 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 this is to make all the bad decisions plan. Let's talk to the creepy burned porcelain doll. It's the work of a moment. It's the work of a moment to fix the doll's voice box. Pull the string. You pull the string. The doll's eyes roll back into its head and its mouth begins to move. Hi, I am Grace. What's your name? I'm Major. Hi, Major. You're nice. Do you want to play with me? Yes, let's play. Hooray! Mary used to play with me, but we didn't get to finish our tea party before she went away. Will you help me finish it? Sure. Hooray! The game is almost over. Mary did such a good job. The, dies, uh, the doll's eyes rolled back forward. Go downstairs and get my cup. Do you know the magic word to make the mean cow let you into a secret room? No, what is it? The magic word is peanut butter. The doll goes silent. Got it. Peanut butter. You shudder as you realize that talking dolls haven't been invented yet. Spoopy. I got some blackened beans. I got some cat's eye candy. Some sarpuliella. Which is, uh... Never wish sure I would spell this, and you still aren't. And some jelly that's cargo. There's a weird cow shaped stain on the wall. Whisper, peanut butter. Atop this altar, atop this sinister looking altar, sits a copper goblet filled with what appears to be blood. Let's take the goblet. A chill runs down your spine as you touch the goblet. You got the goblet of blood. Yay! My tea! We can finish our party now. Sure, why not? You carefully pour the blood from the goblet into Grace's mouth. Ah! Grace leaps out of the toy box, <laughs> laughing manically, and climbs the ranch house's ruined chimney. She turns towards you. See you soon! She leaps to the ground behind the house and scampers off to the northwest. That's probably fine. All right, let's let's eat some food. Get my uh, stats up. I got some cactus bits. I got some, some cheap whiskey, and uh, moxies are what I want to get up, and some sauce, sauce po whatever. I found Mary Stern's diary. Let's read it. The first page says, in a little girl's handwriting, this is the diary of Mary Stern's. The AI in, sorry, this is the dairy of Mary Stearns. The AI and Dairy are crossed out and IA is written above them. The diary starts out as typical kid stuff. You flip ahead until you notice the writing getting shakier. Found a dolly under a cactus out back and she told me your name was Grace. My mom, mama and papa don't believe me that she talks. They say I got a big imagination. Grace says the cows are gonna get us but papa says we'll be okay says well be okay cause this weren't never a cow ranch. Grace says he's wrong, but Papa won't believe me. Grace says she can keep the cows away, but I have to play tea party with her. Keep reading! I don't like this kind of tea party, but Grace says it's important to keep the cows away. Mama said that she couldn't find Effie. Papa said she's been gone so long and they should put up a cross, but Mama won't let him because she thinks she'll come back. Papa says she's only 11. How far could she have gone? And Mama started crying again. Don't want to play tea party anymore, but Grace says I have to. Papa went out two days looking for Joey, but of course he didn't find him. Mama cries so much. I tried to tell him and Effie 
Try to tell her him and Effie are keeping the cows away, but she don't understand. I told Grace I'm not playing tea party again, but she says I gotta, and if I don't, cows will eat all of us. You'll eat all three of us. She said either I get Mama or Papa to play, or else I gotta play by myself. That's the last entry. And I need a lockpick for that one. Nothing more to do down here, I suppose. It's a crate! I got a bar of soap and ranch dressing! Yay! We got some cactus bits. Jethro Stearns, devoted father, died 1895. I found a charred locket! Yay! I got a smoking chrysanthemum. Gwendolyn Stearns, devoted mother. Mary Stearns, died. Excuse me one second. There we go. Sorry. Now that. Oh, sweet, it's an outhouse. Between the smoke and the noise, you're guessing that the contents of this outhouse are more dangerous than average outhouse contents. Oh, no, it's a pyrobove. All right, let's summon a bean golem. Come to me, bean golem. All right, then let's use that. Kaboom! Oh, dang, that's a lot of damage. Let's see, their tea parties don't include blood rituals, but I realize you probably don't know that for sure. Yeah, you don't actually know what their tea parties involve. Um, but the question is, do you want to find out? Is that a question you want to know the answer to? Yay! By the soft light of the faded embers, you see a glint of light from below. You hold your nose with one hand as you fish out the prize with the other. I got a toilet pistol. Let's go, Horsey McCor. Let's go back to Dirtwater and fix the piano. You see a streak of fire blast across the sky and land just over the horizon. You ride to the site of the impact and find a meteor. I gained 659 meat. Yay! Okay, let's fix the piano, man. You lift up the piano player's... the player piano player's coat to reveal the hatch on the back that leads to his innards. It's locked, but it's not a very good lock. Pick the lock. You open the hatch and check out the machinery inside. There's obviously something wrong, given all the plinking and sprung and clicking noises coming out of the gears and stuff. It looks pretty complicated. Uh, I see what's wrong. You recalibrate some springs and rearrange some gears, and the machinery inside starts operating smoothly. The music improves immediately. No, he doesn't play me. He doesn't sing me a song, unfortunately, but he does stop playing really badly. And that is worth it. All right, let's go to... Where do we want to go next? Let's go to the Cavern Canyon. No, 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 he's the player piano player man. I found the snake pit mine. Crowbars. Yay. I got XP from foraging, and I got some hot coffee. You see, you can see the gang on the other side of this pile of junk, but you're not going to be able to find get them from this end. If you had more legs, you'd be able to pick your way through it. Hmm. 
Well, the door has like 15 deadbolts on it. The note tacked to it says, Please don't open this door unless you want to get eaten by a spider. Even then, don't open it because the rest of us don't want to get eaten by a spider. It isn't even science, so you can hardly be expected to take it seriously. Well, let's open the door then! The tunnel behind this opening goes straight up. There's no way to go through it unless you're a giant, huge spider. Weapons? I got a fancy knife. Medicine? Oh no, I can't get the medicine and booze now? You must have a death wish dead in that close to that thing. Alright. Alright, well, you heard it. You hear a horrible skittering noise, followed by a scream, followed by more horrible skittering noises, followed by more screams, followed by some more rapping noises, followed by some muffled screams. Then there's more skittering. Then silence. Let's go inside! The gang has been prepared for spider consumption. Hmm. Let's leave them for the spider. You step outside to wait for the inevitable. It's nature's way. There's a tattooed tooth in one of the skulls. I got a tattooed tooth. Yay! The remains of a group of outlaws tragically killed by a giant spider. This poor chef is chained to the wall. His eyes widen as you approach. Hey, you're not one of them. Are you here to rescue me? Sure. Oh, thank goodness. He thrusts his hand into yours and shakes vigorously. I'm Doug. Major, how do you do, Doug? Well, I've been chained up in this dang cave for weeks, cooking for these stripy-hatted idiots. Sounds awful. Remember the worst part is a perfectly good oven eight feet to my right and a shelf of perfectly good ingredients eight feet to my left. Er, uh, how is that the worst part? This chain is only four feet long! Ah, that's rough. I know, right? There I was, fresh out of culinary school with a million meat idea in my head. And now here I am, four feet shy of my dreams, cooking the same pot of soup over and over again. What million meat idea? You, uh, you promised not to steal my idea, right? Yeah, I promise. Okay then, it's a new kind of sandwich. Or well, maybe a taco. It's still revolutionary that I'm not sure where it fits in the whole hand food taxonomy, to be honest. Anyway, in the middle of it, there's a sausage. But it's a sausage made from the cheapest possible parts of a pig, ground up so finely that you can't even identify them anymore. Okay. And it's served in a long split roll, which soaks up the grease so you can't tell how fatty the hot sausage is. Um. And the best part, the name. You ready to hear the name? Sure. I call it. Are you guys ready for this? The Hot Doug. What do you think? How about the Hot Major instead? Don't be ridiculous. Hot Major? What does that even mean? Haha, <laughs> ridiculous. Hey, there's no need to be mean about it. He sighs. Not that any of this matters. Even if I did get off this chain, there's no point in hanging around in this empty cave making hot dogs just for myself. I don't even like the taste of them. You can set up shop in Dirtwater. Brilliant! You're a genius, Major! Hot dogs for sale. All day, every day. I'll make a mint. See, there's an idea. What if I added mint to the sausage mixture? He'll open break his chains. He leaves the cage, haul in the oven and his shelf of ingredients, muttering to himself about new sausage recipes. That's that, then. What's this? I got the jaw harp. It's a little twanger. You can pluck it if you'd like. I got cheap whiskey, cheap tequila, and cheap wine. Well, I guess this is what Principal Giant Spider was doing. Oh, dang it. I got mostly scabs. I get plus five maximum HP. Yay. 
I guess Principal Giant Spider was doing this before, uh, before his day job. To dirt water. You find a crate of supplies bound for a nearby army fort. Looks like it fell off the wagon. Or the driver fell off the wagon and was too drunk to strap it down. In any case, it looks like it got knocked open by the fall. I got hardtack and military grade whiskey. Yay! Well, where's that sheriff? Howdy, what do you need? Just give her the tattoo tooth. Yep, that's the tattoo tooth of the leader of the stripy hat gang, all right? I'd recognize it anywhere. Reeves, wanted, the Potemkin gang for unlicensed civil engineering and flaunting of construction regulations. Last seen in an unregistered settlement north of Dirtwater. The poster shows the location of the suspicious city these guys are handing out in. Sure, I'll go check it out. We found the Potemkin gang's hideout. Ah, oh, sweet. Let's check out the hot dog. Howdy, Doug. Well, if it isn't my savior, good old Major. Howdy yourself. The sign outside. Yeah, I had to change the name. I tried to file a trademark, and it turns out there's already something called a hot dog. What is it? Trust me, you don't want to know. I wish I didn't know. Anyway, a single letter removed, and I'm in business. He gestures at the menu on the wall behind him. Let's see what there is. There's the saucy dog, the jumbo dog, and the elegant hot dog. That's what I'm really interested in, to be completely honest. Alright, let's go to the rescue mission. You smell it before you see it. A skeleton trudging towards you, covered with mud and muck and smelling like garbage juice. You must have crawled out of some horrible bog nearby, and if the skeleton smells this bad, the bog must be unimaginable. So it makes sense that even a skeleton would want to get away from there. So it's a bog skeleton? So I get to fight a bog skeleton? Oh, dang. No, this is bad already. Oh, Kelsey's getting her revenge and hasn't even had to do anything. I'm gonna die. If being unconscious means I have to smell that skeleton anymore, then so be it. I got Blossom Jane. We're near Fort All Dead. I've heard that's some serious necromantic activity there. We should take a look. It sounds pretty sinister. What is it? Well, pretty much just what it sounds like. It's an old army fort where all the soldiers are dead. Except rumor is they're still walking around in there. They named it Fort All Dead before they all died. Now, originally it was just called Fort Just Fine. Gosh, a real life nun. Er, yes, I'm Sister Tabitha. I'm Major General. What's with the cots? Well, what with the cow attacks and so on, I felt my faith would be better served by running this place as a clinic rather than just a church. I also sell medical supplies if you'd like your healing to go. Do you need the errands run or something? Funny you should ask. I've been experimenting with the healing properties of a purple grass that grows near here, but I've run out. Would you mind picking some up for me? It grows near a cave that makes an unusual humming sound. Hmm. Alright, I need some broken leg pills. Alrighty. I don't think I'm ready for a pair just yet, so let's head back down. And let's go to... Hmm. Let's go to the railroad camp. Horse and Core takes a weird turn somewhere, and you find yourself completely surrounded by old dead trees. Where are you? The Grimace closes in on you, and Horsey McCore 
marches confidently towards the gnarled and ancient forest. You shudder. Horsey McCor stops. The, through the fog ahead, you see a shape. You dismount to investigate it. It reveals itself to be a shape of a pedestal topped with the shape of a book. Take the book. A chill runs down your spine as you touch the book. The black-covered book, written in black ink on black paper, is a primer in the arts of southwestern necromancy, otherwise known as Nexmex. Well, there's only one thing to do with an introductory book on necromancy. Read it! It seems like a pretty, probably pretty dangerous. Are you sure you want to read it? Yes. Okay, it's your funeral. Whatever, Grandma. You cannot see the words on the page, but you can nevertheless read them. Your mind becomes stained with grim secrets. You got a skill. Grand skull. As you turn over the last page, the book vanishes in a puff of black smoke. Spooky. He's too busy playing with his washi and your work done. Ask him where he got it. I bought it from this gal that runs a store down south of here named... Oh, Buttonwillow. Buttonwillow McSomething. Where's the store exactly? Oh, you can't miss it. It's right in between a cactus and a different cactus. You point to a spot in your map. You discovered a new map location. Buttonwillow McKittrick store. Thanks. Don't mention it. Don't mention it. She's not getting much track laid, but she's an expert whistler. You approach the beleaguered-looking man with the tiny glasses. Howdy there, who's in charge of this outfit? Well, if I'm being charitable, I'd say that fellow over there in the white hat is the foreman. He points at the man next to the huge pile of rocks. And if you're not? He smiles. Then I'd say that paper black, paper-backed idiot over there in the absurd white hat is the fellow you're looking for. Alright, thanks. Hi, are you in charge? I was wondering if you, there's anything I can do to help. You want to know something? I love trains. Oh? Ever since I was a little boy, huge, magnificent, roaring iron beasts, they were magical to me like dragons. When the opportunity arose to take on management of this rail line, I jumped on it like a shot. You know what I learned? What's that? Organizing and building and running one of these operations is the most amazing pain in the ass you will ever imagine. You want to help? Congratulations! You're the new foreman! I'm going home to play with my models. Swell. I guess I'm the boss now. The man licks you up and down. Well now, I suppose you can't be any worse than the last dick clown. He extends his hand. Name's Smee. I'm your assistant. What's the situation? Well, I'm sure you didn't miss seeing the giant pile of rocks blocking our path. The surveyors say there isn't any other suitable mountain pass, so we can't reroute around it, even if we had months it would take. Any ideas? Well, by my calculations, we could dynamite it, Claire, without too much trouble. We could... The problem is, it'll take a lot of dynamite. A whole year's worth, I figure. We used to keep that much on hand for emergencies, just as this one, but a pack of goblins stole it all. Sneaky little varmints. Alright, I'll get it back for you. Glad to hear it. The goblins are holed up over in Gustafsson Gulch. It's a real rough place. You might want to spend some time getting the lay of the land and honing your fighting skills before you head that way. Especially if you plan to go in guns blazing. We don't need that specific dynamite, though. Any you can lay your hands on would be fine, as long as there's enough of it. I'll look into it. Alrighty. Let's go to the snake pit mine. It's an exposed meat vein. Look at the mining equipment. You have no idea what any of it does. Oh man, you guys are going to like this one. I'm going to explain it to Alice, even though I have no idea what it does. Hey, Alice. What? I just wanted to tell you about this mining stuff. Um, okay. So this first machine here, this is an automatic backfill excavator. Alice stares at you blankly. Move on to the next machine. And this thing over here, this thing is used to extract angular methane and then uh, convey it. Alice sighs. Keep going. And this third machine, this is an accreted slate fracturer. fracturer. It converts peat, it converts slag into aphanitic coke. You got a perk. Mine splainer. 
Alice rolls her eyes. Are you finished? Yes. Yes, I am. I got a hot coffee from the cactus. You can see a snake coiled up in this little hole. Pull it down and punch it. I got meat. And my blood beans level ex went up. Yay! There's a smoking snake in this smoking hole. Pull it out and fight it. So I'm gonna go to him and then shoot it or stab it. Oh man, this snake is really roasting me hard. But I'm better than it. You literally, you really smoked that snake. I mean, you didn't smoke it. Like you smoke a cheroot. You just smoked it figuratively. I got a cache of mining supplies. Yay! I got a pickaxe. I can get meat. This den is full of snake eggs. Pull them out and fight them. Booyah! I shot up all the snake eggs. I get so much meat. All right, let's go to the humming cave. There's an old grave off to the side with the tra of the trail. Or if not, then someone went and stuck a wooden cross in the ground for no reason. Dig it up! I got a handful of loose teeth, a handful of old coins, and an old wedding ring. Yay! I got purple grass. Huh, these rocks are weirdly organized. You may be able to push this over. Try it. Ha! Huh. Take that, snake. Oh, what's this? Wow, what is this thing? What in the world? This looks dangerous. This monolith is dark. A weird device. Take it. Alrighty, let's go back to the Minerus, or the Professor's house. I'll check that out later. Let's go give this to the nun. Here's your purple grass. All I get from it is experience. Alright, let's go to the Professor's house. The Professor? You encounter a bandit who doesn't look like doesn't look very banded like due to the lab coat and side rural holster holster. Fortunately, she's also wearing the standard black bandit hat. Otherwise you might not have been able to tell. Alright, Buster, this is a stick up. Hand over the meat. You don't seem to have a gun. 
Yeah, I'd like to see you try it because I've invented an anti-punching ring and that would just help me test it. The anti-punching ring? How interesting. May I have a look? Are you using a positive matrix force field? Positive matrix? No, a sigma field derived. Sigma? Oh no, that won't do at all. Oh geez, really? I hadn't thought of that. Back to the drawing board, I guess. And I got a ring of moderate unpunchability. The beeping machine leads you to a ramshackle house in the middle of the desert. Hmm. Oh, I got a floral ring. Cool. Uh, excuse me, my name is Major General. What? Oh, I didn't see you come in. I'm not used to visitors. The first general called me the professor. Is there something I can do for you? But I found this bleeping gizmo, and I sort of followed the bleeping, and it led me here. The I be it led you to the right place, young man. This is the El Vibrato technology, and I happen to be as much as an expert as anyone alive today. The El... what now? El Vibrato, they were an ancient race that lived here long ago before humans. Well, they mostly lived on the ground, so they might still be living as far as I know. Never seen a peep of an actual person, though. Just the machines they left behind. Were they space aliens? Could be aliens, or genius pre-humans, or an entirely different terrestrial evolutionary line at this stage of investigation? It's impossible to say. Isn't it exciting? Hey, let me have a closer look at your bleeping gizmo. Aha, uh -huh. as I suspected, this is one of the transponders. It detects other Elvabrazo technology and homes in, you see. That'd be why it led you here. I've got a thing I've been trying to repair. He tinkers around with the transponder for a bit, and then plunges a stone, marble, plugs a strange stone marble into the socket on it. There you go, good as new. Just swipe up or down to turn it on or off. Swipe? Now I got to warn you, the device will lead you to abandon El Vibrato technology, but it might also attract unwanted attention. From what? From the El Vibrato technology. And see what I mean. Just be careful. Okay... You know, now that I think about it, you've arrived at the perfect time. In order to get anywhere further with my research, I need more samples of El Vibrato tech. But my search for it took all the time I could be using to research it. Aha, I get you. Right, you are the adventuresome type. So bring me back whatever devices you find, and if I can get them set up, get them up and running, that'll benefit both of us. Alright, deal. Great. First priority would be getting my keystone fabricator running. They lock their doors and hit theirs and things with those little stone alloy blocks, see? So if we can make our own, that'll open a lot of doors for us, literally and figuratively. Alright, what do we need? The components aren't rare, at least as far as price as ancient technology goes. Bring me uh, about five handfuls of scrap, and I should be able to salvage the last parts I need from that much. Roger that. Huh. Alright, flush the toilet. Alrighty. Actually, let's see what Mary has to say. What, uh... what do you think of this guy, Doc? He seems alright. Got kind of strange hobby. Okay. Let us go back into town and give this guy his broken leg medicine. Oh, hello. Were you able to get some broken leg pills? Rather, I'm just sort of stuck lying here in the street. Yep, here you go. Whew, thanks, I feel like a new man again. Or at least the same man with a new leg. That's good. Go drink some milk or something, okay? He waves and skips happily away. Well, that was nice. Alrighty, where to next? Let's go to... Hmm. The desert house is hard. In hard mode. Um, let's go to the old mission. Let's give them back their skull. Dynamite my den, discount dynamite in my den house. Oh man, I'll check there later. The tuna cactus, but I can't afford that one yet. Or rather, I can't unlock it yet. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! What's wrong, sister? They came back. They just came back and took them. I couldn't stop them. Whoa! Slow down, okay? What happened? Our holy relics, the saints just stormed up out of the catacombs and took them back. Wow. I didn't know what to do. I thought maybe they'd fire me if I tried to stop them. The cardinal would be here any minute. What am I going to do? Well, to start with, take a deep breath and try to calm down. Okay? What's your name? I... I'm Sister Mary. 
My name is Major. Now, what's this about saints? Our missions or mission is to protect three sacred relics. I'm the relic keeper. It's my specific job to look after them. Wait. Do they call you Memento? Me she shows you the ruler she keeps tucked in her sleeve. No, they do not. Okay, okay, sorry. So what happened? The saints. Oh, it's too horrible. They just, they came to life somehow. They came about the catacombs all skeletal and ghastly looking. I mean, it's probably blasphemy to say that, but I nearly fainted. And they took back their relics. Yes, and if they aren't recovered before the cardinal gets here, I'll be in so much trouble. Oh, how much time is there? Well, actually, it's months overdue, so it's probably not all, all that urgent. But still, all right, I'll get them back for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, wait a second. Are you going to have to fight them to get the relics back? Because that's probably blasphemous, too. Uh, I mean, probably, but if black magic brought them back to life, that's, like, super blasphemous, right? So it evens out? Oh, dear. The Cardinal's gonna have a, going to want to have a long talk about this. But go ahead and do what you must, I suppose. Okay, let's go beat up some saints. cop looks like it was hauled down here fairly recently. It's empty. It's a precariously balanced pyramid of skulls. They're all riled up and twitching. Kick it over! Are you sure? There's a lot of them, and they're really mad. Maybe angering all of them at once isn't a great idea. Kick him! Oh, this was a very bad idea. Oh no. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Yep, I'm dead. I got angry. So, we do not fight every skeleton at once. That's, uh, I got a gold tooth. The skull is twitching in an unnerving fashion. Though I guess there's no way it would be twitching that wouldn't be unnerving. Stop twitching! Summon a bean golem. Then burn you. Fava bean. I love the music. The music is so catchy. Oh crap! Forgot to heal. Oh, I should have healed. I'm a fool. Well, let's go back to the uh, the rescue, the old mission. Or well, let's see. Let's go to the Gustafson Gulch. Before you can react to the sudden howling, a ghost train surges over hill and roars past, just missing you. Three skeleton train robbers arrive just behind it and barely avoid colliding with you by pulling back hard on their reins. The train vanishes in the distance, and the robbers seem really annoyed by your interference. Well, let's attack them. Someone might be in Golem. Rip. A fancily dressed goblin speaks forward. Hi, hello, be in the mayor, welcome. Now go on the way, please. The goblin seems friendly, but blocks your entry into the gulch. Can I not come in? 
Sorry, only for Goblin to be in. Very private. This is not very nice. Don't you want to foster in better human-goblin relations? Hmm, hmm. I could be a new human ambassador, and you go to human town, be in their goblin ambassador. Guessing that might be a good idea. Diplomatics, yes? Okay. The mayor shakes your head and starts walking towards Dirtwater. Scientist, nothing interesting in Goblin. You hear a quiet rustling as though a single goblin was rummaging through a crate filled with straw. Go in and beat the straw out of it. Burn! Oh crap! He killed Mary. He killed. Uh, he killed in one hit. That's not good. I require her to heal me. Die. There we go. Haha. <laughs> I got absolutely nothing from that fight except for some experience. You listen to the door, it's quiet inside. The shack is crude bookshelf filled with bookshelves. Uh the bookshelves in turn are filled with crude books. Three titles catch your attention. So very complicated numbers. All you can tell about this book is that it concerns extremely high level mathematics. You don't have the vocabulary to understand any of it, and probably still wouldn't even if it were written in English. Your brother would probably love it. The book is an extremely detailed trees on the sounds that different birds make. You probably wouldn't expect to learn how to do an accurate great crested grebe impression from a book, but that's how de detailed it is. This popular children's novel has been translated into Goblin. Jabberwocky still pre reads pretty much the same. Oh, wit brillig bean and stoves of slathing did in a wave, did in a wave gyring and also gimboling. Well, nothing more to do there. You listen at the door, but don't hear anything. Rats, looks like the door is locked. The shack is filled with thousands of tiny cabinets, each labeled with a number of goblin. Look in a random drawer. I got a lollipop. Got a goblin sandwich. And I got goblin trousers. Red herring storage. You hear a couple of goblins rustling around in here. Sounds like they're doing something really important. Well, let me not interrupt them. Mayor's house. You don't hear anything inside. Let's check it out. Investigate the bed. It's made of cactus logs and a bed made of woven together cactus needles. That can't be comfortable. Check out the desk. The desk is strewn with folders. You can notice one that says important secrets on it. Read the important secrets. You learn a variety of secrets, though the only one that's actually pertinent to your circumstances is that there's a spare key in the treasure cave in drawer 69105 in the storage hut. Nice. Let's look in drawer 69105. I got the Gustafson Gold treasure, cave spare, treasure Cave Key Spare. Wow, I cannot speak today. You press your ears to the door. And here's somebody delivering what sounds like lines from Hamlet, except in goblin tongue. From this vantage point, you also notice a sign next to the door reading Backstage Entrance Herod Bean, with an arrow pointing to the back of the building. Head backstage. You sneak backstage and watch the play from behind a curtain. Not only is it in a goblin version of Hamlet, it's also been rewritten as a one man show. To be in or not to be, or to not be in? Oh, that is a question. Could it be better thinking to suffering or crazy things and arrows? Or fighting so many bad things for stopping them because fighting? To die and to sleep and to sleep in hey! Dreaming maybe, but oh problems. If dreaming crazy when living, what dreams having after dying? Wow. Pretty weird probably. You watch for a while, the bits where the actor has to do a sword fighting with themselves are pretty entertaining. Nice. Okay. Let's kick his ass now. Oh, I can't just beat him up now? That one's just Cafe and Goblin. To go us inside. Oh. I don't have lock picking. There's guard barracks. Well, leave them be. 
I got a bung of cactus bear. The goblin is paying more attention to their book, Goblet, than you, but you're pretty sure you aren't just gonna be wal you aren't just gonna be waltzing on by. Spoil the ending of Goblet. Hey Goblet, good book. What you thinking about how Goratio is only surviving what at the end? And everyone else dying, poison and sword and pow blam. Ah no wow, spoilers. The guard runs out of the cave. Each the guard runs out of the cave with their hands over their ears. Yay! The goblin guard is whittling a little wood bird call, but they're not too busy to beat you if you try to get past. Oh, I'm gonna try my new bird call skills. Oh, gasp! A great crested grebe! Wow! A guard pulls out a pair of binoculars out of his uniform and runs out of the cave. Unlike the other two guards, this one has been suspiciously attentive. And very suspicious of you. Also unlike the other guard talk, the other two guards, they have a name tag that says Gene. Well, I guess I have to fight him. Holy crap! Right? Such a nerd. If he hits me again, I'm dead. Yep, there it is. Uh, okay. Fortunately, in this game, there are items which I can use to chug and uh, get better at things. Well, I can change my hat. Plus two spell damage. This is. Uh, let's switch you over. Um. Ooh, 7 to 9 damage. This one does 5 to 6. So switch over to the knife. No, fit, nothing better there. Um, forge and random encounters, plus 2 armor. Nothing there. Gives me plus 1 and everything, so let's keep that. No pants, plus 2 armor. Okay, so let's just try eating things and chugging things and all that stuff. All right, so let's eat some blackened beans, and then Vienna blood sausages, and some cactus bits. Oh no, my stomach is full. Ah, oh, sweet, let's get the blossom gin. That gives me a whole lot more damage, and uh... I think the cactus bear would be good too. Okay, let's drink some hot coffee and uh, some ranch dressing. Now I'm a lot more sturdy. Alright, let's beat up Gene. All right, let's summon up the bean golem. Then let's deal some fire damage. Oh, rip. Make you flammable. Lower your stats. And then throw dynamite at you. And we'll stab you. I don't feel too good. I'm gonna lose this fight too. All because he went for the doctor first. Rip. No! Ugh. Thanks, Alice. Okay, so Gustafs and Gulch, still still a bad idea. Let's go to the Button Willow store. You notice a smoldering hole in the ground and recognize it as the habitat of the southeast western coal snake. They keep to themselves mostly, but they're also known to enjoy a fight if one is thrust upon them. Thrust one upon it! I'll steal some hot damage to you first. And you're gonna shoot you up. 
And I'm gonna stab you. Or I can just do that again, actually. Burn! I got a snake venom bladder. Yay! The woman behind the counter stares at you with a huge grin on her face. She gestures at the goods she's got for sale. Ah, sweet. Advanced bean craft? Mind your meat? Let's get that first. And then, let's use that. I get a discount at stores! Let's get advanced bean craft. Then let's read that. Hmm. Okay, let's get uncanny presents. I have all kinds of um, resistances to damage now. Alrighty. Let's go. Where do we want to go next? Hmm. Let's go to the Potemkin again. To your delight, you see the silhouette of a big circus tent towered over the pines. You discover a new location, a circus! I'll take that out later. A burr. Oh, I remember this one. Okay, this one's actually pretty weird. You duck into the outhouse to plan your next move. While you're pondering, you notice something weird. The outhouse has a back door. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get them behind this one. And then I'm going to blow them up. This band looks distraught. What's the matter, buddy? I lost my belt buckle! Well, good luck with that. I said, I don't remember. Okay, so I want to get them all to the sandwiches. Are you looking at the sandwich shop? Oh, good idea. I'll look there. Guy shouts, everybody's condemned. It's not safe to go in there. And then runs over to stop you. Ah, damn it. I just want to talk to you. There we go. And now they're all in place. To blow them up. This will kill three jailbirds with one barrel. Boom! <laughs> Scoop up the remains. And then let's go back into town and collect my reward. My reward! Oh, hey, it's Cactus Bill! Cactus Bill! Didn't expect to see you around these parts. Well, I gotta admit, I got a little envious when I saw you leaving Bowling Springs, and I figured I'd hitch a ride out west to see what I could see. And just look at this place so much hustle, so much bustle. Sure is a lot of both of those. Hey, nice pot. Thank you kindly. So what's new? To be honest, this new is a profound sense of longing and loneliness. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Bill. Well, it is what it is. I was hoping I'd run across a similarly lonely cactus lady somewhere out here. Or failing that, a normal human lady looking to marry a cactus. No luck? Not yet, of course. Getting around is a bit of a challenge. But as cactuses live a long time, I'm sure I'll meet somebody. Someday. I'll keep an eye out. Heck, I sure would appreciate it. Time to go to the sheriff. Give her the sticky black goo. That's the Potemkin gang. The What the heck did you do to them? Don't ask. Okay, well, here's your reward. Next time, please bring back some less disgusting evidence, please. 
Cactus June? Who's Cactus June? Yet another wanted poster. Lots of criminals around these parts. The poster says, Wanted! The Black Hat Bandits! For horse theft and the selling of counterfeit glue. Last scene headed north towards the old millinery. Huh. I don't remember Cactus June. No good can come of criminals with access to hat making machinery. Would you like to go investigate? Yes, indeed. The old millinery. 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 Well, off to the old millinery. You find a pair of saddlebags slung over a tree branch. Stenciled letters on the side read, Property of Fort All Dead Library. The bag is full of books, mostly born military field manuals. You do find one of specific interest to you, though. Advanced Beancraft, Volume 9. Or 11. Millinery. Millinery? I don't think there's an... Oh, there was... No, there's no A. It's just millinery. Let's learn more book. Wary, use the old bean. Let's use wary. Afterwards, you narrow your eyes warily at the book. You walk into the millinery and find five bandits lounging around on big old piles of half-made hats. This is the law! Skedaddle! The bandits scatter like cockroaches, each shutting themselves behind a different door. Keeps you left to wrangle them individually. Fine. Hatch room number one. Gee, I wonder which one the criminal could be hiding under. Uh, one second, I just... It's starting to get hot in here, which means the residual air from the AC is... starting to wear out. Wear out. And... I need air. But I'll let you guys guess which one of these hats has the criminal in it. Oh wait, you actually can't see the uh, the last hat. Give me a second. Because my camera is blocking it. There you go. As I was saying, I wonder which hat there could pro possibly be under. Which which of these hats could there possibly be? Oh, I'm gonna go with uh this one. Ready for it? Some sharp shooting now. Bang. Ker bang. Go to hat room number two. Hmm. There we go. Jacques! Bang! Had room number three! Hmm. Oh, there we go. That's the one that's different. Jacques. Number four. Jacques. Ha ha. One more hat room to get. Let's do. Pub the yellow rose of public domain.
I don't actually know which hat this person's under. Maybe the trick is the piano. This was apparently the demo model from a player piano showroom. So we got three songs on it, and they're all children's version of traditional songs that are in a recently invented public domain. And they're all set up to play just the first few seconds on a loop. The people who worked here must have hated it. What song do you want to set the dial to? Oh man, let's put it on Public Domain Joe. You changed the song at the piano. Is that whistling you hear? Gotcha! Deal with them. What do you want to do with these guys? Let's shoot them! I got five black hats with holes in them. You shoot nice, neat circles through each of the bandit's hats. That gives you something to aim for when you execute them. Justice is served. I wonder how long before somebody in chat gets upset at me for doing this. I love this song. Come from where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Come from where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? I don't have been for Cotton Eye Joe. I've been married long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? I don't have been for Cotton Eye Joe. I've been married long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? I've been forgotten that Joe. I've been married long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cutting that Joe. I've been forgotten that Joe. I've been married long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cutting that Joe. I've been forgotten that Joe. I've been married long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cutting that Joe. I've been forgotten that Joe. I've been married long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cutting that Joe. Alrighty, let's head back into town. Collect my reward. Hello again, what's up? Give her the five hats. Uh, no, not that version. Not this version. This is the public domain version, which plays only the chorus. A fifth wanted poster. Poster says, Wanted! The Gherkin Brothers! For kidnapping, Brian and kidnapping victims, and attempted sale of human flesh for consumption. Lasting hit it for the old abandoned pickle factory. Interesting. Yes, indeed, I would like to investigate the abandoned pickle factory. I cannot solve that. You 
feel a sudden electrical jolt as your hand touches the doorknob. Ouch! Oh no, you're late for a shift. Mrs. Vlas is gonna be so mad. She might literally bite your head off. Okay, well, not literally, literally. Probably. You clock in and hurriedly put on your bright green overalls. Coveralls. Mrs. Vlas has predicted is furious. Late again. You'd better stop taking this job for granted. You think you're going to find a place with a nice dormitory at a reasonably priced company store like ours somewhere else? With your skills? Ha! You're doing three shifts today, Buster. Get to work. You're on pickle hopper duty. Pickle hopper duty runs you ragged, like always. Keeping those hoppers filled to, filled to keep a constant flow down the chutes means you're constantly in a near sprint because you have to manage the, sh the cuke shunts to keep the levels equal. If you get unevil pickle levels, Mrs. Vlas knows. Nobody even knows how she knows, but she knows. Whack from her cane is the minimum you'll get. Damn it, damn it, damn it. At the end of the first six hour shift, you get a brief break. You cram a stale cheese sandwich into your mouth while Mrs. Vlas glares at her pocket watch, counting down three minutes to the second. Break's over, second shift. You get to the salt tank. Now! Managing the salt tank isn't as strenuous as the pickle hoppers, but it's still never ended in tension. The brine concentration has to be constantly monitored and kept at a very specific measurement, which means constant adjustments. Meanwhile, you can feel yourself desiccating from a haze of salt dust that fills the room. If anything in this place kills you, it's probably going to be salt tank duty. White lug is nasty business. <laughs> Cough on your own time and get that salinity back to normal. It's supposed to be 976 parts per thousand. How hard is that to remember? 976. Idiot! You get another 180 second break before third shift. You spend most of it drinking water. The company doesn't charge for water, but you've heard a rumor they're considering it. Breaks over. Get to the boiler. Oh no, please let me out. Boiler duty means shoveling coal into a furnace, a furnace that runs a giant tank of boiling vinegar. It stings in here. You try to work with your eyes closed, but Mrs. Vlast screams if you drop any coal on the floor, or if you let the temperature get too low, or too high, or just for no particular reason. At least you're used to the smell of boiling vinegar. In fact, you can't smell anything anymore. Let me out, let me out, please. 190 degrees, idiot. Not 189, not 198. What do you think we're paying you for? You don't really miss your sense of smell or not coughing all the time. You don't really want anything anymore. Except to die. Okay, so let's write these numbers down. Oh wait, I already do have them written down. I just need my pencil to fix one of them. There you are. 976. 190, 190 degrees. Okay. Let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out! With a gasp, you finally snap out of the horrible hallucination or possession or whatever the hell that was. Jesus, you can, you f you can feel the sting of vapor vinegar in your eyes. Enter the pickle factory. All right, let's start with the vinegar. Temperature reads 83 degrees. Take the shovel. Eighty-seven degrees. Ninety-four degrees. Hundred and five degrees. 123 degrees. 145. 162. 171. 176. 181. 191. 182. 182. 187. 203. 193. 210. 200. 190. There we go. I need to talk to you now. You approach the ghost. It's not right. It's not right. 
If Minigur is 190 degrees, it's finally done. Thank you. Rest in peace. Rest in spaghetti. 531. 631, 931, 76. The salt is correct. It's finally done. Thank you. The ghost smiles as he fades away. A few bones hit the ground below it. Salt crested skull. Eleven, eleven, and eleven. There we go. It's okay. I took care of the cucumbers. The ghost smiles as he fades away. A few bones hit the ground below it. I got a pile of bones and cucumber. Pull it. I got a ghost pickle. Let's turn it in for the reward. Oh, it's no vibrato monster. I got scraps. And I want to take this to the sheriff. Alrighty. So let's go to the circus. Well, this is a little weird. You didn't expect to find a circus all the way out here. There's basically nobody around for miles. There's a rodeo clown man in a ticket booth. Well, there hasn't actually been a rodeo since the cows came home, so I guess he's just a clown. Ugh, clowns. Not a fan? They're so creepy. When I was little, my uncle would give me nightmares with old stories about them. <laughs> Those old fairy tales? Demon clowns and demon cows fighting wars in hell? Right? And supposedly... These rodeo clowns dressed up like that because the first rodeos were reenactments of those battles, and it became a traditional thing. If you'd asked me 30 odd years ago, I would have said you were nuts for even considering this might be real. These days, I'm not so sure. That fellow there is just a man in a makeup with a crap job at a carnival. Yeah, I know, it still creeps me out though. I'd like to see the circus, please. Well, you came to the right place then. Hey, 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 but if you want to get inside, you'll need a ticket! Presumably you can sell me one? Why, certainly I can. That's my job after all for you, sir. I take it will cost 5,000 meat. Say what? Does it seem a bit high? I promise you, sir. At this price, it is a real steal. You've got that right. Why is it so expensive? Well, now this is no podunk little traveling circus. We've got rides, games, foods, and an amazing demonstration of knife throwing skills by none other than Barnaby B. Bob himself. Tell me more about the rides. Well, I suppose I'll just say ride, but we haven't had a single grizzly merry-go-round accident since, uh, well, since we stopped turning it on. What about the games? Oh, we've got tons of them. Does three count as tons? Three is more like some. We've got some of them! Tell me about the food. You've got your favorites. Popcorn, sarsaparilla with the fancy new bottle caps, and get this. Do you hear about this new thing a fella invented? Cotton candy? Yeah, I think I might have. Well, it's still patented but we're more or less sure we figured out how it works. Mostly. More or less. Tell me about Barnaby Bob. 
Oh, the boss is a real master of knives, to have me tell you. He does this amazing stunt where he gets a volunteer from the audience up on stage and throws knives at them. He never misses his target. Did you leave out the part where he puts an apple on his head or something? What? Oh, right, sure. You're doing a very good job of selling me on this. Whatever do you mean? First you ask for an outrageous sum of meat, and then you describe your circus in terms of making some decently cut rate. Well, now, if you really expect me to pay that much, you'd be doing your best to make it sound like a magical paradise. On the other hand, if it really is as chintzy as you describe, you'd be asking a price cheap enough to overcome poor word of mouth. Er, which leads me to the conclusion that for some reason, you don't actually want to sell me a ticket. The clown starts to look nervous. Now, now, let's not jump to conclusions, friend. I'm just putting your leg a bit, clowning around like we do, it's all good fun. So the actual price is... 500 meat. I can buy half a horse for that! Sure, what are you going to do with half a horse? The circus is much more entertaining. Hmm. Well, alright. Alright. Let me just stamp your hand for re-entry. There you go, enjoy the show. What about my partner? Partners get in for free. Thanks. Enter the circus. You show up to the circus, actually I guess more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs. You find it almost entirely deserted. There are more than a dozen other patrons beside yourself. There are a bunch of clowns working around, clowns around working at the booths and so on. More clowns than customers, which is a little unsettling, but at least the lines won't be very long. Howdy, fella! Can I interest you in the wondrous and mysterious delights of the sideshow? What the hell do you have in there? Secrets, mysteries, think too weird and disturbing to be witnessed by the light of day. Freaks? Not just freaks. Gosh, how much does it cost? For you, 300 meat! And for everyone else, 300 meat! Oh, sure, I have 4,000 meat? Alrighty. How much are your balloons? I'll take one. Can you tell me more about your circus? Really, it's more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs. Ho ho! What would you like to know? Where are your traveling plans? Why is everyone working here a clown? Who's this Barnaby Bob guy? Okay, we'll see you around, clown. <laughs> Talk to the vendor. The wizard blows his slide whistle again as you approach. Whoop! Step right up, fella! Step up and try one of the world's newest candy sensations! What is it? Cotton candy! The finest in several senses of the word. Sponge sugar. Created through a revolutionary new process that's so light and sweet and fluffy it's like eating butterfly dreams and kitten wishes. Foo wit! So this isn't actually made of cotton? What? No, cotton is indigestible. No matter how much chocolate you cover it with. Found that out the hard way, did you? Phew! How do you make it? You press the metal box with a wide funnel coming out of the top. This little machine right here. Can't tell how it works, much as I'd like to brag. It's a trade secret. You invented it? <laughs> Not as such. A couple dentists down south were the first ones. Dentists, go figure. Whew. But after hearing about it, I managed to figure out how it works. Made a few improvements with my design, too. Now I'm really curious. Sorry, fellow, these secrets in these boxes are for nobody's eyes but my own. Whew. I'll be happy to sell you some cotton candy, though. How much does it cost? Just 300 meat. I'll take one. Okay. Here you go. The cloud puts a slide whistle down on the counter, ducks underneath, and comes back up with a proper cone, which he hands, which he holds in the mouth of his metal box. He pulls out a lever, and the machine makes a thin squealing sound as glistening white sugar, white spun sugar, clicks around the paper cone in a fluffy cloud. Here you go. Enjoy. Okay. Then I want to buy some more. I'll take one, and then I'm gonna steal the whistle from you. Ha ha! He comes back up with a proper with a paper comb, and she holds in the mouth of the metal box. He pulls down a lever, and the machine makes a thin squealing sound as glittering white spun sugar collects around the paper cone in a fluffy cloud. Here you go, enjoy. Hey, where's my slide whistle? Oh man, I could swear I put it down right here. Haven't seen it, bye. I'd like to see the lost and found, please. Our sure thing. What did you lose? Oh, well, nothing. What? You just figured you'd see if I had anything you liked? Look, there's no such thing as an honest thief. You gotta pick one or the other. Sorry. Oh, you know, I need to talk to the kid first.
Come here, you are, kid. You okay, kid? Did you lose your parents? I lost my little bottle cap. You haven't seen it, have you, sir? No, but I'll keep an eye out. What does it look like? It's shiny steel, and it's on a little chain. Okay, I'll let you know if I find it. Weren't you on the other side of the midway just now? Oh, nope, that's the other balloon guy. We just dress alike and use the same face paint. Did we fool you? I see. Anything else I can do for you? No, I'm good. And let's use this. What's the game? Okay, I'll give it a shot. Oh, crap. Oh, wow, why is my mysticality so low? Are all my stats that low? Huh. I thought they were higher. Okay, now I want to see the lost and found. Ah, crap. Press the wrong button. I lost the lucky bottle cap. Just through your meter, my slide whistle we haven't to find it. I really miss my slide whistle. I think I saw a slide whistle in the uh, lost and found box over by the sausage stand. What? Really? Oh gosh, wait here just a minute. The clown runs over to the sausage stand and you quickly duck over around the counter and open the front of the metal box. What you see inside is not what you expected. You see a fat, paper white spider, the size of a cantaloupe. It's lying on its back, feebly struggling against the straps that bind its legs to the floor of the box. Slowly you pull the lever. A rod moves inside the box, pressing down on the spider's abdomen. The spider emits a thin squealing sound and squirts something that sure looks like sponge sugar out of its anus and up into the funnel on the top of the box. Shut the box. You quickly shut the box and dart back into the front of the counter just before the clown returns. He gives you a momentary suspicious look, but is quickly distracted by the joy of getting his slide whistle back. Oh, wait, you were right, thanks so much! The clown p carefully puts his slide whistle in his shirt pocket, ducks underneath the counter, and comes back up with a paper clone. And she holds in the mouth of the metal box. He pulls down a lever and the box emits a thin squealing sound as something resembling glittering white sponge sugar collects around the paper cone of fluffy cloud. Here you go, enjoy! You got an item! Cotton candy! Thanks! Okay, now let's... Oh, Cole, you're gonna like this one. I'll be so interested you in a foot-long sausage. Well, what are they made of? What do you mean? They're pork. What else do you make a sausage out of? Well, I was wondering if you had a vegetarian option. This is a carnival, not a herbival. You're, you've been saving that one up, haven't you? For years, thank you, sir. How much are they? 250 meal, your choice of condiments. What are the condiments? Well, I've got onions, pickled, relish, three kinds of mustard, and two kinds of ketchup. What kind of mustard? Brown, yellow, and blue. Blue? Blue mustard. Oh, uh, looks like I'm all out of the blue. Sorry. Two kinds of ketchup. Yep, got both ketchup, ketchup, and ketchup. No thanks. Oh uh, man, where is it? Um, how much are they? Two hundred fifty meat with your choice. No, oh, I messed that up again. Um, are they actually a foot long? Twelve inches? Cause you know a lot of guys say that, but I'm gonna stop you right there. As soon as there's ladies and children present, you want one or not? What are they made of? What do you mean? They're pork. What else do you make a sausage out of? Okay, I'll take one. Thank you kindly, sir. Here you are. Help yourself to the condiments. A large pork sausage with your choice of condiments. I got long pork. The sideshow tent is fairly large and packed with weird things to look at, like all good sideshows are. A few lanterns are hanging from the ceiling, casting flickering shadows around and making everything look... Yep. And making everything else look more eerie. The clown is hanging out in here, presumably to keep an eye on the exhibits. He grins and nods as you enter. Come on in! Take your time! Have a look around! Just remember, no touching! This looks to be one of those weird bent mirrors that make you look all crazy! Looks like there wasn't enough crazy looking stuff around here already. 
Your reflection in the mirror is short and squashed looking, folded up like an accordion. You spend a moment moving back and forth in front of the mirror, seeing how the image changes. It's kind of amusing. Well, let's ask him. Howdy, fellow! Welcome to the slideshow! Thanks, what's to see it here? Well, down to the left, we have a collection of spooky warped mirrors. Right here, we have exhibits of clown eggs and pickled punks. And further down to our, the right is our freak show. Feel free to explore, and I'll be here if you got any questions. I have a question. What's with those weird mirrors? Aren't they a riot? That's what they call an optical illusion, as I understand it. it has to do with the way the light reflects off of them. Uh, huh. Sorry, that's what I want to do. You see several shells full of white eggs, each one painted with a unique pattern of cl colorful shapes. A small placard pinned to one of the shelves says clown eggs. In the circus community, it is traditional for each clown to paint their chosen makeup pattern onto an eggshell. These clown eggs are archived for future reference to assure that no one chooses a pattern that has already been used. It's considered extremely taboo to wear another clown's face. These must be the eggs for the clowns that work in the circus. You recognize a few of them, like the clown here in the sideshow tent, the, the ticket seller clown up front. Hey, wait a minute. Here's the egg for that balloon selling clown. Didn't he tell you there's another guy wearing the same makeup? According to that sign, that seems unlikely. Inspect the eggs more closely. Hey, step back, please. No touching. You lean in a little closer to inspect the jars. They mostly contain malformed and or mutated animals, pickled in formaldehyde, a three-headed kitten, some kind of ferret or weasel with eight legs, a twisted Mobius loop of snake without a head of doll, head or tail, Weird crazy stuff. One shelf seems devoted to huge, p gross, pale grubs, like fat, featureless white worms the size of sweet potato. The one on the end is larger than the others and has shiny black eyes. Someone has painted its face in an apparent parody of clown makeup. Yuck. Take a closer look. The pasty white face has been painted with little blue triangles over and under the eyes. The creature has a long, thin slash of a mouth as well. And the area has a long blue and the area around it has been painted with bright red lipstick. The bright eye, the black eyes flash red as the thing suddenly thrashes in its jar, spinning to face you and stretching its mouth open, revealing rows of yellow shark teeth. You stumble back with a cry of shock. Yeah! <laughs> Got you pretty good there, buddy! What, what, in the, what was that? <laughs> it ain't a real critter, it's made of rubber and clay and doll parts and such. Got an electromagnet under the shelf to move it with... He takes a little push button gizmo out of the pocket to show you. Should've seen your face, you jumped right about out of your boots! <laughs> Ugh. Here's the wild part. You lean in closer to inspect the gross thing. Despite what the clown said, it certainly looks real. Whoever made it did an excellent and disgusting job. If you can throw your tips to under the shelf, you don't see any evidence of an electromagnet or any other such device. This guy has a startling sight, even for a circus freak show. His entire head is just one enormous eyeball. As you look him over, he stares back at you. Not that he's given much choice. Or well, hello there, I'm Major. How's it going? Can you talk? Guess not. Move a little closer to the side and lean over the rope and get a closer look at the guy. He's basically just what he seems to be at first glance. A guy with a giant eyeball for a head. You do notice two things, though. First, he has an odd lump at the... Well, what you would call the base of the skull if he had one, a sort of crumpled fleshy mass the size of a fist, with this quint and some imagination, it almost looks like the crushed and disheveled vestigial remains of a human head. The second thing you notice is that his angles are locked to the legs of the stool, and the legs of the stool are bolted to the floor. So, uh, the circus gig. How do you like it? His hands slowly curl into fists, and the knuckles turn white with tension. I see- Oh, I understand, I mean. Do you? Blink? Or wink, I guess? I guess not. Okay, well, see you around. Hello there, welcome to the science show. My name is Douglas. Hi, I'm Major. Delighted to meet you. So, uh, well... Are you perhaps thinking of a polite way to ask what's wrong with me? Yeah, you got me. Don't worry, Major, I am in a sideshow after all. It is an obvious and natural question. Wait a minute, you said that last week without moving your lips. Are you a ventriloquist? Not at all, allow me to demonstrate. He stands up and turns around. 
His back is the same as his front. That is, his suit has been tailored with two front sides, and he has another face on the back of his head, with his hair cut and parted, appro with his hair cut and parted appropriately. Ta-da! As he sits back down, his knees and other joints crack and pop loudly as they reverse themselves. Douglas winces slightly, though certainly not as much as you would expect. What in the... Surprising, yes? Uh, bitch, yeah? How is that even possible? Douglas shrugs and holds his pipe up to the now back of his head, so his other face can take a puff. Are you... what's the phrase? Siamese twins? Not exactly. It's difficult to describe, I'm afraid. Two minds in wild body with two faces. It would be closer to the truth to say two instances of the same mind, with, as you say, two faces. You're right. That doesn't make sense at all. The other face chuckles, and Douglas holds his magazine behind his back. It took some good and used to, that much is quite certain. Were you born like this? I would rather not discuss how I came to be this way if you don't mind. Okay, sorry. No apology necessary. Your knees must be a wreck. Surgery was necessary to permit them to bend in both directions. It sounds worse than it feels, I assure you. Why are you in a sideshow? With a regular student haircut, you can easily pass for normal. I have a contract. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot the clown making a gesture. But you didn't catch what it was. Douglas clears his throat. Plus, well, it's quite the life, you know. Free room and board, travel the world, and you meet such interesting people. I'll talk to you later, Douglas. Or, uh, hello. Hello there, enjoying the carnival? Well, it's interesting. She smiles slightly. Yes, I'm sure it is. Can I ask you something? Certainly. What's your name? I'm Janet, and you? I'm Major, er, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Major. Why are you in a box? That's a rather personal question, isn't it? Oh, sorry. I'm only teasing, dear. Would you like to see what's inside? I don't know. Chat, do you, do you want to see what's inside this box? Chat? Do you want to know what's inside this box? Um, sure. Janet whistles to signal the clown, and he moseys over. He unlocks the door on the front of the box, and throws it open with a theatrical flourish. Inside, instead of Janet's body, you see a tangled, complicated assortment of glass tubes and pipes, ticking clockwork gears and pumps. Liquids of various colors, mostly red, slosh through the tubes. A large bellows near the top inflates, then begins to slowly deflate. What do you think? It's some kind of trick, right? You're folded up behind a mirror or something in there? No trick. The clown chuckles and walks around the back of the box. He opens the hatch and waves at you through it, then saunters back to his place by the shelves. It's horrifying! Like something out of a nightmare! Yes, that's an accurate description. I'm sorry, I hope I haven't insulted you. No, no offense taken. I've only seen it myself once in a mirror. It took quite a while to get used to the situation. You watch the various liquids slosh around in their tanks and pipes for a minute. Weird, gross, but it is indeed educational. I got anatomical learnings. How did this happen? Were you in some kind of terrible accident? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about that. Of course, sorry, it must be a painful memory. Her calmly composed face creases into a very slight grimace as she shoots a sidelong glance at the clown. Yes. Well, it was nice to meet you. Janet, so long. Good luck, Major. Guys, look at it. That's so gross! This is Janet's body. It is so gross. This looks to be one of those weird bent mirrors that make you look all crazy. As if there wasn't enough crazy. As if there wasn't enough crazy looking around stuff all right already. The mirror makes you look really stretched out and thin. Your limbs twist and writhe like snakes. Like snakes as you move around. It's a bit unsettling. Your muscles ache a little, sympathetically. God, this mirror somehow shows you what you look like in clown makeup. Bloodshot eyes stare back at you from a pasty white face paint, painted with an odd pattern of red triangles. In the flickering light, lantern light, it almost looks like the, it almost looks like he winks at you. Ugh. 
I get in the f you look in the mirror again and see your limbs stretch out like taffy. Twisting around the tentacles of an octopus, you can hear your joints cracking and your muscles feeling like they've gone through a ringer. I gain an effect. Minus 10 HP. Yay. You look in the mirror again, and the clown you is still there, staring. Very slowly, he opens his mouth into a wide grin, revealing multiple rows of yellow, pointed, shark-like teeth. Not wanting to keep looking, but unwilling to turn your back on it, you slowly sidle away until it is no longer visible. Swallowing hard, you approach the mirror again. It's empty. Not only is Clown you gone, you don't show a reflection at all. Uh, about these people, uh... Does he ever blink? You mean wink? Heh! <laughs> nope, no eyelids. I gotta toss a bucket of water on him. For once in a while so he doesn't get too dry. He does look a bit dry now that you mention it. Hmm. Yeah, it's getting about that time. Excuse me for a minute. Expect the eggs more closely. Since the clown's distracted, you take the opportunity to get a closer look at the eggs. You notice three things about them. Firstly, they're too large to be chicken eggs. You have no idea what kind of eggs they are. Secondly, they've all been broken and then very meticulously glued back together. They almost look like they've been reassembled after something hatched out of them. And thirdly, one of the eggs features a pattern of red triangles that you recognize. It's the same as the clown version of yourself that you saw in the mirror earlier. You quickly step back as a cl guard clown returns. He gives you a fair amount of side eye, but doesn't say anything. That tears it. These clowns aren't regular people. Dressed up as clowns because of some kind of carnival tradition. These are for real demon clowns. Like the ones in the old stories. You're basically in a clown hive. This is bad. Real bad. I have a feeling that you know about them. Real. Real bad. Uh oh. Well, 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 what else is there to do right here? Let's talk to you. Earlier, you told me there was another clown with the same face paint. That's right, the other balloon seller. Except I looked at the clown eggs display in the sideshow. There's only one egg with that pattern, and it's supposedly taboo for a clown to use another clown's makeup. See, you're real sharp. Better watch you don't cut yourself. Ho ho ho! So what's the deal? You're right, there's just me. I walk around the midway and sell balloons at both ends. When people ask, I like to have a little fun with them. So you're not actually following me around? Oh, why would I need to do that? You aren't dangerous or anything, right? Right. Anything more I can do for you? I'm good, thanks. What do you mean? They're pork. What else do you make a sausage out of? Regular pork? Or long pork? The clown gives you a long, chilly look. I'm sure I don't know what you're implying, sir. No thanks. Let's get out of here! Let's go to Fort All Dead. I'll tell that lazy A dude later. Holy goddamn. Yeah, this is a little intense. We have to do something about this. Immediately. Any ideas? Well, only thing I can think of would... To rid all of these things at once would be to poison them somehow. That isn't very doctorly. Haven't you ever heard of vaccination? Look, would you rather fight an army of skeletons all at once? Or find a way to slip something into their food? Night supply nice and quiet-like. Hmm. Well, let's go to the mess hall. I got needles. Hmm. Nothing I can do around here, I guess. I got an old petrol cap, which I can't use. A cryptic note about ley lines. 
There's no fun to an evil looking leather bound tome. I got the fundamentals of Next Max. Seems to have been written by one of the Necromancer's cultists. He and several others were reanimating the dead soldiers here. On the theory that the best undead army would be a literal undead army. The hitch in the plan came when they raised the officers who decided they weren't going to take orders from a bunch of weirdo civilians. The last entry suggests the author and his cohorts were planning on abandoning the station and reporting back to the necromancer. But the entry ends abruptly in the middle of a sentence. Yay! This seems like a probably pretty dangerous. Are you sure you want to read it? Yes! Alice glares to burn a hole straight through you. You better not be thinking of what it looks like you're doing. Relax, Alice. I can handle it. Fight fire with fire, right? If I think for even a second you're turning into another necromancer, I'll be fighting fire with lead. It's cool. Don't worry. Wait, so am I not allowed to read it? Are you certain? Okay, there you go. Are we certain? The Dark Arts are no laughing matter. This could really mess you up. Alice growls and give you the hairiest of eyeballs. Read it, I said! The words crawl off the page and into your eyes like worms. The worms burrow deep into your bones and then whisper stuff to you about cool things you can do with other people's bones. I got a perk. Where is skeletal buddy? As you turn over the last page, the book vanishes into a puff of black smoke. You don't feel so well. Your hair instantly loses all of its color. I got skeleton spore. Oh, it's just us. How do I go about poisoning a bunch of skeletons? Ah, there we go. Taint it with waste. You sprinkle the waste all over the food. If this works by tomorrow, they should all be no more. See, there's nothing more to do around here, so let's go check out the Lazy A Dude Ranch. A greenish human shaped cloud of writhing smoke wafts towards you, moaning and whispering. Given the smell, you'd guess that somebody ate way too much Limburger cheese and then burped so hard they blasted out of their soul. Let's fight it. Oh no, I'm gonna lose this fight too. Why do you hate this game? What's wrong with this game? I see nothing wrong with this game. I gotta learn the rope, a lasso, and some ranch dressing. Cool. Hey, like, howdy. I'm selling herbal medicine, herbal remedies. Care to buy? What kind of herbal remedies? The kinds that are gifted to us by Gaia without any interference by human hands. So, weed. That's a derogatory term created by the man? But yeah, basically. No, I'm good. Howdy. Hey, yeah, howdy, man. What's happening? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Oh, not much, man. We moved on to the little patch of land to grow crop, but then we decided it's more natural to just let Gaia grow where she wants, right? I bet that's a lot easier, too. <laughs> right on, man. So, uh, where'd you get that hat? Oh, this? A friend of mine made it, man. Um, I forgot which one. What did he take for it? 
Oh, I've been thinking of trying a new style, man. Maybe like one of those hats the army guys used to wear back in the day. Like, it's an ironic statement, man. There's an old fort over yonder that way. I'll swap you can find one of those, man. Like, this one you mean? Nice, man. Barter is like commerce, man, except natural. Can you dig it? Yeah, groovy. Weirdo. Howdy, I'm Major. I'm Louise. Louise Lathrop. Why the long face, Louise? Ah, geez. Basically because I'm stuck here farming with a couple of dummies who don't know how to farm a dang thing. So they just let the weeds grow and call it natural. I'm so sick of eating dandelions, I could scream. Why don't you leave? I haven't got any meat or any other prospects or anywhere to go. I mean, dandelions are terrible, but better than eating dirt. It's such a mess. How did you get in this predicament? I had a rest after graduating bacon school and fell in with these guys because they talked a big game about natural grains. Fool that I was, didn't realize they were all they were really interested in was getting silly on loco weed and not doing any work. Hmm, so you're looking for work? Gosh, yes, desperately. The only trade I know is bacon, though. Do you know somewhere that's hiring a baker? Heck, even unpaid would be better than this if it comes to the room and board. I just want to get out of here. I don't, sorry. Oh, shucks. Well, if you hear anything, please let me know. Hagar Zagavi. Local weed. Northern Clown Ward. So I can't... My forging ain't good enough to pick any of these. That's lame. Where to go next? Hmm. Let's go to the professor to learn about these ley lines. A nearby cloud of dust turns out to be a bandit on a horse. Right in hell for leather for unknown reasons. Well, I know them, but you don't. You pull your horse up alongside hers and match her speed. Hi, what's up? What's the fire? Get bent and or lost. You should be careful, there's a lot of geomi geom geomide geomide activity around here. What? The rest of her sentence is cut off as her horse trips over a gopher hole and goes down into a snarl of filled and limbs and dust. You catch her meat pouch out of the air as miscellaneous loose possessions flying out of the tumbling cloud. Ah oh well, them's the brakes. Not yet. Do you know anything about ley lines? I don't hold very much with this mystical mumbo jumbo. It's very unscientific, but it has come up in my research from time to time, so I can give you a basic overview. He draws some curved intersecting lines on a piece of paper and explains how they relate to local geography and so called mystical forces. I got a ley line diagram. All right, where to next? Uh, let's talk to you to figure out what else I have to do. What do you think we should do next? Oh. Um, any other idea? Oops. Am I forgetting something? There we go. Ask for another suggestion. Um, oh yeah, I do still need to do the old mission. And the House of the Desert Bandits. Okay, so those are the only things I have left to do. So let's go to the old mission. Your transponder, Gizmo, beeps, and you follow the bleeps one of those weird El Vibrato machines tromping around in the desert. Fortunately, the other hasn't noticed you or doesn't care.
Oh no, my beam tower is gonna fall soon. Oh no, my beam tower! And my beam buddy! Haha! Victory! I got two little vibrato scraps. Now I just need two more. Okay, well let's head back down. Let's beat the skull up now. Cause it looked at me weird. Spooky. Get burnt. Haha, <laughs> I beat the skull. I got a gold tooth. Yay! And a souvenir spoon. A skull is whispering at you. That doesn't seem right. It sounds like gibberish, though. Really creepy gibberish. Hey, I put the skull back. I got a creepy whispering stone. Weird. Oh, I can't get past them otherwise. Okay. A skeleton with two skulls. Oh no. Haha, <laughs> take that, you skeleton. Alright, oh, Alice got stronger. This way to the Paseo del Santo. Hold on, let's see what this plaque says. To plaque. Here lies Saint Beefus. After he died, his body kept trying to rise to heaven. But it was so heavy, it just kind of flopped around a bunch. They had to enter him in a big stone sarcophagus to put a stop to it. Ew. Well, I guess I have to open it. And let's fight! Oh my goodness, St. Beefus is ripped! St. Beefus is so beefy! Oh man, he does a lot of damage too. Rip. All right, let's see if I can juice myself up with some items.
Oh man, I can get Ghost Pickle and get any of those ghost abilities. Um, let's eat some hard tack first. And then, and yeah, let's do the Ghost Pickle. I am Ghost Pickled. Let's drink some Cactus Beer. And some cheap whiskey. Let's do some ranch dressing. And, um, cat's eye candy. There we go. Let's try that again. Wake him up. Because they're awesome stick figures. I'll have you know the animators put a lot of work into this game. Yeah, I'm gonna die again. Oh, sweet. I'm taking, like, no damage. Because I'm a ghost. I'm ghost pickled. Take that, Saint Beefus. I got Saint Beefus's finger and his thigh. Yay! The remains of some kind of dark ritual. Hmm. Here lies Santa Cortada. She was drawn and quartered by heretics, and then the quarter that had her head on it was beheaded. The dismemberment was so effective that nobody was able to get her body to stay together, even after she was just bones. Spooky. Let's reassemble it. Nope, at the very last minute the bones fly apart again. Seems like you've accomplished what's making them angry. Oh man, that's a lot of, uh... That's a lot of bones! I'm not gonna win this fight. So let's pull you up. Let's pull you up. And, uh... Let's see if we can just kill the... Oh crap, I missed. I was gonna go for the skull. Oh! Alice will instantly destroy a skeleton. Do it! Good job, Alice. I mean, do any of us have really have anything better to do with our time right now? I would argue no. Haha! <laughs> You're so good at this, Alice. Let's see what to beat these people up. Have you, Cory? Have you really? Yeah, I've been. I'm ready to call it soon. To be honest. As fun as this game is, it probably was a bad idea to play this for just four hours straight. Oh, baby, I got a sweet ring. It's way better than the ring I had before.
Here lies Saint Pope. He was excommunicated for impersonating the Pope. There was some kind of bureaucratic issue, so they weren't able to unbeatify him. Weird. I'm a Pope, seriously. Oh no, I don't have enough moxie to insult you. Hmm. There we go. Now I have enough moxie to insult you. You unleashed a torrent of insults that would make him a sail it would make a sailor blush. And a sailor's mother ashamed of the sailor. Saint Pope's eyes narrow. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um Saint Pope's eyes narrow. Looks like you finally managed to make him mad enough to fight you. Fight him then. Take this, Saint Pope. Haha! <laughs> Victory! I got the Pope's pelvis and the fake Pope hat. How is it stronger? Oh man, I bet I could take on these skulls now. Take this, skulls. Let's kick them. Haha! I win again. I'm so good at this game now. Victory! Thank you for trying to recover our relics. Please be careful. I saw an empty coffin just inside the catacomb door. Oh, don't worry about that. We were just throwing that for an escape artist. An escape artist. Yes, he was taking his axe on the road, but needed to lighten his luggage. So he gave us a generous donation in exchange for storing it for him. Return the pelvis of Saint Pope. Return the skull of Santa Cordata. Return the finger bone of Saint Beefus. You recovered all the relics. Oh, praise be, thank you. I'm glad to have helped, sister. I must reward you for your efforts, though. You don't have much, but I can give you this old censer. We don't have it anymore because Sister Penelope is allergic to the incense. You got the Brr cell sensor. Look, I don't want to tell you what you can and can't say, but let's just call this a shiny gold colored metal sensor and leave it at that. This item goes in your offhand. What swear word starts with BR? By the way, let's throw that on. Let's get more mystical. Actually, what's my stats at? 15, 20, and 10? Okay. Um. Hmm. Listen, I'm up to date on my shows. What's your excuse? The excuse is, I don't have a job. They say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but when you see someone wearing dark cultist robe, it seems like a pretty safe bet that there's some form of cultist. Another clue is the fact that he or she is trying to teach a skeleton how to tap dance. At least that's what it looks like from here. Is who I blame. I 
I got another next max. Yay! The Vampire Kyodal skill. It seems like it's probably pretty dangerous. Are you sure you want to read it? Yes. Are you certain? The Dark Arts are no laughing matter. This could really mess you up. Alice growls and gives you the hairiest of eyeballs. Read it, I said! As you read the words in the book, a voice that is not your own howls along with them in your head. As you get nearer to the end, the howls become more and more melodic. You got a skill, Vampire Gudo! As you turn over the last page, the book vanishes in a puff of smoke. You don't feel too well. Your body withers and shrinks. You got a perk emaciated. Yay! Question mark? Give the dog a bone. Ha ha. With a knick-knack petty whack, you achieve your aim. The dog begins contentedly gnawing on the human femur. Good for him. Yeah, totally a perk. What's wrong with that? Let me rethink this. The hinges are getting real rusty. If you open it, these guys are definitely going to hurt. Oh, you know what I need? I need oil. I need a can of oil. There we go. Thank you. Thank you kindly. School. This Jaggy Dog Cave. I'll check that out later. Doo -doo, doo -doo. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. All the hinges. Nice. If you had a lock, you could turn this fortress into a prison. Ha ha. Back to the store to get a lock. You don't sell locks. What are you good for? Okay, fine. Let's try a dirt water. You find an abandoned crate which apparently fell off a wagon or something since the lid has been knocked loose. You know what that means. I get a can of oil and a can of kerosene. Yay! Ugh. You also don't have a... Useless. We'll take that, though. Okay. Yeah, let's just see if I can beat them up. Ooh. You see by that outfit that he is a cowboy. And you see by his lack of flesh that he is a corpse. Take his stuff and also his bones. Dang, Major. You're really not the sentimental type, are you? Nope. Let's beat these guys up. Hmm. So I can't kill any of these guys off the bat, but I can make them take a lot. Oh, I can, actually. Actually. I win. You're dead. I got a bag of airs and such, and a gun, and boots. I got cactus bits. Well, this is a uh, certainly is a bag of severed heirs and teeth and such. Which gang was this? The House in the Desert Gang. I'll take your word for it. Good job. All right. 
So what else is there to do now? There's, uh... Hmm. Guess there isn't much else. So let's go to the Shaggy Dog Cave. Out in the middle of the desert, you find an abandoned minecart. It's sitting on a section of minecart track about 12 feet long, which starts nowhere in particular and ends even less of somewhere in particular. Check it out! I got an unrefined meat nugget! Oh, I remember this. I'm not I'm not doing this. This will be like a good ten minutes of me just talking. Um okay, let's try the Goose of Sun Gulch again. The big apple Oh, let's go there right now. Because you know what? As you reach the center of the clearing, you are simultaneously struck with a profound awe and a terrible stench as you discover the largest road apple you have ever seen. You can't even imagine how this got there. Was it a giant horse? Was it 200 normal-sized horses acting collaboratively? They... they should have sent a poet. Yeah, they should have. I cleaned up the poop. I cleaned up the horse poop. I don't have safe cracking, unfortunately. Alrighty, let's see if we can beat up Gene. Oh no, Gene is still so strong. Oh no, you bypassed my thing! Oh no! Doc Alice! There we go. I did it. I won. I got meat. I got more meat. I got a year's supply of dynamite. Oh, I can't open that one. Any luck finding the air supply of dynamite? The passengers are getting restless. Yep, here you go. Good, this'll... Perfect, this'll do the trick just fine. Hang back for a bit while I get the fellows to set up the charges, and I'll let you do the honors. Smee consults with the other doctor, with other workers, and they inspect the rocks for a time. Eventually, one of them shrugs, pushes the whole crate of dynamite up next to the rocks, and wires up a detonator. Alright, let's let it rip. Sweet! Bluey, what? It's a stone golem. I'll have to magic it away. You still your breathing and squint until you can make out the rock monster's aura, as you expected. There is a web of cracks and faults in it. Where the creature's energy was disrupted by the force of the dynamite, you point your finger at the weakest part of the damage and channel a little magic into it. The monster's aura shatters and the rocks drop lifelessly to the ground. And blow a little smoke from the tip of your fingers and put it back to its holster. Yeehaw! All in a day's work. Well, now that is as fine a day work, fine a day's work as I've ever seen. Much obliged, friend. We'll be getting the rest of this track laid down and head out now. Here, I'll mark our route in the map for you in case our paths happen to cross again. Thanks, but can't I just ride the train? Got a ticket? 
Ha, just kidding. Of course you don't. Every seat on this train is sold out. Sorry, boss. <sighs> Alright, so. We beat part round one. We beat part one. We, uh... We got the train moving. As we can see, the train is now in this area. Alright, so let's take a break there because I think we're all tired now. Everybody's a little bit tired. So let's... Let's just call it there. This game is fun. It's amusing, especially when I'm just objectively making bad decisions. Doc Alice is not happy with me for slowly becoming a necromancer. But, you know what? I'm in charge, she isn't, so I get to do what I want. Um, she can't tell me what to do. So, we'll be back tomorrow. Um, I may not play this game again tomorrow. As fun as this was, I find playing it again so soon after I just beat it kind of tedious. So I may play something else. I don't know, I'll figure it out tomorrow. Um, but in the words of two wise men, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes.